All right, for joining us, thanks so much. Really appreciate it for the Wayward One session 77. Wayward right. Ones. Not fighting a god, but we're still important. <laughs> Never <laughs> lost. <laughs> All right, so uh, a recap. So we spent some time in the last session uh, at the Library of Absolutes. We went through a couple lore informations, and so we're going to really transition away now for the recap. Uh, there's not really any other things to recap besides that and a few other things, but we're going to go into the actual information, and by doing that, I went ahead and um, uh, on, uh, if you press J onto the simple quest, uh, you'll be able to see that um, I populated some things out now. Going into the downtime here, I'm actually going to be editing the documents because you are able to uncover more information. One of the person, one of the people who's taking downtime, I saw multiple times. Uh, Mikey, you said your uh, your character here, Dirty Joe, is going to spend some of their downtime doing more understanding and research of the Devourer. Is that correct? Um, that was the initial thought. If we're going to do the third, the full thirty days, though, I'd like to get the uh, materials for a legendary tattoo. So if I could do both, that'd be cool. Unfortunately not, uh, if that's the case. Yeah, let's uh, let's go with the materials then. OK. Is anybody doing any research on the Timekeepers or the Devourer? More so than has already been conducted. For their downtime. Oh, you know, Kit is totally out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking I'm going to be grabbing religion proficiency probably if we're doing 30 days would I'd be able to like pick up some of that in the process of getting the proficiency since that's kind I think, of I think that's I think that's okay if you're doing research already for the religion skill you're able then to pass that over to try to understand more about the timekeepers and devour sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and remove Oh, in case anybody wants them, um, I just took a look at the Mental Fortitude, very rare tattoo, plus one to Int, Wisdom, and Charisma. Requires one exquisite handful of metal scrap. I have 14 of those. So... Oh. I mean, it's kind of useful, but at the same time, it would require a two-minute slot, and I'm full yeah. up on this. It's... I mean, it would... Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm well, a bit I mean, conflicted. Your stats are already insane anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So a document should have popped up uh, yep. on your screens here. Um, so this is, again, I'm I'm trying to get all my notes into using Simple Quest. It's going to be super long, such a tedious process. And I'm kind of like picking out information based on where the groups are at to make it, you know, like I'm not just like starting somewhere and then, you know, building up from A to B to C. I'm going to start in the alphabet from where you're at to try to make the information as relevant as possible. Um, so in the Simple Quest, the... Actors, bestiary, uh, history, factions, locations, that's going to be the categories. And then in there is going to be the actual handouts or the documents. So history, you can imagine, are going to be laid out just like this. That's popped out for you. There should be an actual time uh, that is listed in the actual top right. And that time will be relevant either to the Antares timeline or it will be relevant to an era. And the era, all you need to understand is before time fracture. And it's just a period that existed in creation uh, between that and time fracture. And in the realm of how that's connected, generally that those information history don't really have a whole lot of take as far as year wise, because we don't don't really care. Right. Um, and those errors will be explained at some point uh, when I create um, an actual tree, because I actually can create in this simple quest. There's a way to mark down and use this other language. I can actually create like a tree as it moves through. I can actually create like a chronological mm -hmm. era thing. So. That's going to be the intention anyways. Um, now, as far as this information that's presented here, uh, the death of the timekeepers, this is stuff that we uh, was already kind of given to you. You'll understand, uh, but it's going to create more of information that I wanted for you all. This is essentially your lore, uh, no, your lore document, right? That I was uh, intending to write. Instead, I took that time to write it into SimpleQuest as more 
uh, of a of a document that you can reference uh, as a as a as a whole, right? Um, so the piece of information that you are able to uncover with more research in the thirty days of downtime is that within the aisle was an object that they referred to as a time fracture obelisk, and the timekeepers were chosen and used gifts given by the old one in the research. The old one was an entity that had influence over the aisle and its waters, just like the Isle of the Blessed. Their gifts were to see into the past, present, and future, right? And so each one got past, or one got past, one got present, one got future. And then they saw their world met with consumption, as they stated in the notes. And this is what you're able to correspond with Porig, because Porig held a lot of those notes and those uh, letters that were private correspondence that were given to the headmaster and anybody in a high official position within the various houses, right, of Felgen, because there's multiple branches. We saw that south chamber, which was kind of like an uh, you know, an auditorium, you know, like an auditorium, right, with those little benches and stuff and labyrinth. Um, now, as far as uh, that, they said consumption by uh, the vower, and then and they tried to use the obelisk to stop it, which led to the destruction of themselves in the aisle. Okay, so the latter, the last sentence there, that's going to be more. That's going to be more that poor egg is going to is uh, if you get poor and lucid, they're going to add that piece of information to it. Porig is going to say that Felgen, people of Felgen believe that they tried to use the object and that led to the destruction of themselves in the eye. That's what Porig will say. Okay. And then the next piece here is uh, referred to as the time fracture. I'm not going to pop that out. You simply can go ahead and click that. Um, and then of course, we don't know exactly when that event took place. We just know what happened. We know that the time fracture is something, but now revealed is the information that corresponds to the time fracture obelisks. And this is going to give you a mechanically speaking of what they actually do and what they are. Because undercover, uncovered within the documents from Porig and having a conversation with Porig, the timekeepers knew what the obelisk were and how they functioned with the chosen. And that relation to time. So the key in this downtime is Porig because we didn't actually take a lot of time to spend sitting with the uh, the gnome and actually kind of going through some of this information and waiting and being patient through the multiple personalities, the two personalities that they have. And so for that 30 days, you're able to become more patient, work with them, right? And trying to get some of this information to understand what it is. Okay. So it's time for actual obelisks. <clears throat> We're going to go through that information now. Again, there's mechanics in here. I'm not going to highlight the mechanics. I'm just going to state that the uh, without the objects, it would seem that the chosen and the object right themselves, without the object and the chosen, time would not be anchored to the universe and reality would be shattered. They specify that once a chosen perishes, their mortal soul is released to the afterlife and the fractal of great power is taken by the obelisk to become another chosen and thus continues the cycle of reincarnation. And we know what that fractal of great power is. That was what something that, that Corvos had shared. It's something that also, you were able to figure out from uh, essentially Dimdor, right? So, okay, the spindle, right? No, the the deity of order. Oh, oh, the first the deity of order and time. Now, taking over to the devouring, that document is still pretty much the same. Just buttered up a little bit uh, in terms of it's there. And I've also applied document linking. So that's what I'm going to intend to do in the sidebar is I'll probably put document linking to other relevant history documents or faction documents, that sort of thing. Um, and that's going to explain in detail. And just, again, it's quite similar to what I had, I had wrote already, but I want to make sure that it's understood. 
is that the deity of order and time used their chaos to form time, a one time. And that they were the deity to actually face and fight the devourer. Right, and then both were supposedly successful in their battle. Right. There is a, another thing called Wood of Darkness. We've already been through that. Um, so I'm not going to talk about that, but that's basically the formation of the Marshes of the Veiling. That's like previous. And so I'm, again, there's another group that's before, right? And so I'm just going to be creating this encyclopedia, if you will, right, of information. Um, and then the Treaty of the Koa. So I, again, caught off guard. I was trying to find my notes as best as possible, and I did wing it a little bit too much. Uh, and I was crossing my streams of my brain with things that were could not entirely basically connected in terms of the names. It was all about the names. Um, and so I want to make sure that uh, the information that is there is relevant. So the treaty is still referred to as the Treaty of the Co in my notes um, and uh, not the barrier or whatever it was, it's something different that the Rangers talk about. Um, and this uh, treaty is exactly how I had described. It's basically the separation of that river that cuts through the Niffindel. And Niffindel Rangers have the south and the Zalnir have the north. I've included uh, in factions, I've included um, some information as far as factions. I've created most of them are related to the marshes, but there's going to be one for the Knight's Kiss. And that's going to explain uh, the Isle of Shadow a little bit. Kiss to the Night, Lips of Death, right? That sort of thing that I talked about already. And then location-wise, that's a, that's, a, that's a big one because that's going to take a long time. Uh, and I've just been plugging away at some things that were... Um, Kind of doing region by region base at this point. So, but I went ahead and put the Oromar in there as well, since that was relevant to your, you all as a group, having that as a location. <clears throat> lots to read, lots to look at. One thing that's cool about this, um, you can actually pop this out. So if you do minimize, there's a way to minimize this uh, on your screens, and then you can actually pop it out to have it on a separate. A separate tab if you so choose. Upright, yeah. Uh, because the visual active effects, so the actual oh. like effects of your character will overlap over this. Uh, and there's not really a good way to turn that off without having to like disassociate you from your character. Um, as far as your party journal is uh, concerned, uh, what I'll probably end up doing is if I do any lore postings, I will create lore posting in there and then I'll link to the documents in simple quest. So if there's any like pulling of information, I'll probably link them into there. And that way that the party journal is just a collection of things we did on this session and that gave way to these notes. Um, didn't have enough time to create anything to link over to the documents already posted, but I'll make sure you do that for next week. Yeah, Good this stuff. is dope. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, so. Again, it's, a, it's going to be a massive work in progress, uh, but that's really what I'm at as far as foundries. It's uh, you know, updating, doing updates again, but getting the notes into there is something I've always wanted to do, but there's never been a module to handle it. And the reason why I say that is because there's so many pages and there's so much of it that if I was to put it into what foundry has base and basic foundry, it would be a literally mess of just documents pages <laughs> everywhere and you'd have to pull like folders out and like look through things and the representation of this is very nice um and the way it handles the information is is what i want you all to be able to use and that kind of thing without confusing you since my shit's already so confusing <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> we haven't even really started the session yet i've confused the hell out of y'all <laughs> No, I love it though. That's great work. You know, beats having to flip through all this crap. It takes me twenty minutes to find anything. All right. So let me look at. We yeah, have a for long campaign additional stuff that we're done. 
Okay, um, so Casas, you can go ahead and add proficiency with the religion skill, since it, that's what you're gonna be taking in 30 days. You'll spend some time in the library absolute. You'll also spend some time with Porik, probably using the redeeming and redemption talents to be able to bring Porik at peace, maybe even using a channel divinity perhaps to speak to them and get more of an understanding of the devourer and the timekeepers. Well, I wanted to, since it's 15 days per proficiency and it's 30 days, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get religion and persuasion, both of them. Okay, so you get both of those, um, which actually makes a lot of sense. Porik takes a lot of persuasion, so <laughs> that actually ah, works, ah, works out wait. quite well. I love it. Working with the gnome. That's good. How do I add proficiency in something? It's been... Wait, there uh, you, you should just be able to click the bubble. Yeah. Reverend said that's how to do this, okay? <laughs> I don't add these often. And then, Dirty Joe, you said you were procuring the materials and then going through the craft of a legendary tattoo. Um, well, if you'll allow me to do the crafting as well, sure. So I just added another 10 exquisite demonic eyes to my inventory right now. Yeah, the craft itself only takes an hour, and you no longer need to have uh, a skill check or anything. It is simply just proficiency with needles, which you have. And so you can just take those materials and turn them in uh, to the tattoo. Uh, for now, you're doing the, you said, you said blood fury? Yep. Okay, so just remove, remove the uh, uh, materials, so 100 gold, and then um, the uh, reagent, so the actual creature materials, because the tattoo is actually be three separate things. Uh, in order to accomplish its features. Who's getting it? Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, but I need the damage boost. Oh, hell yeah. Get it. Yeah, 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 don't worry. Plus, you're a ranger, so you can do the damage from range. It's going to be nice. Okay. Uh, so the tattoo has been split up into three. One of them is going to be the charge count. One of them is going to be the necrotic damage, and the other one is going to be the reaction. Cool. All right. So uh, really the reaction is simply going to be uh, never really, you're going to click that. And then that is going to tie in uh, to the resource consumption, which uh, looks like it wiped that. So let me go ahead and make sure that's tapping into the items. Yep. 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 Um, there we go. And then let me make sure the other one is tapped into. Yeah, it looks like it wiped it as well, which is pretty common when it's like stored outside. Of it. There we go. So the only two that you should click are going to be the blood free tattoo necrotic and then the blood free tattoo reaction. And then the only reason why you would ever click them is to remove the charge from the original blood free tattoo item or you're wanting that necrotic damage, and that will actually roll the necrotic damage. The reaction is just a weapon attack. So you're really just going to click that, and then you're going to roll your own weapon and do do so with advantage. Okay. That's it. Now i got to figure out what I want to... Uh, on a two. On a quip. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, though. Yep. Okay, and then... <clears throat> Costas, you said some light crafting? Uh, yeah, the discovery that you sent me, it looks amazing and I want to make it. Um, to do that, I need a uh, dragon hide. Uh, we have enough as a party, but it's party material, so I want to run that by the party before doing anything with it. Um, since, you know, it's not like I personally got anything. Basically, it's a um, legendary piece of armor. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, based on the dragon element. Uh, does it need to be based off the main, like, like the piece of dragon, like, hide I use the most? Or can it just be any of the dragons we've killed so far? Any of the dragons you've killed so far, you just choose the dragon type. Okay, yeah. I mean, anyways, so I was probably going to do red, so it doesn't change anything. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically... Um, I currently, from the last dragon, have four ampules of exquisite blood and four ampules of ex and four exquisite hide. And in the party fund, we have seven exquisite hide and um, 
four ampules of exquisite blood. Um, I would only need two bloods, so um, that would be a quarter of the blood. And I would need eight hides, which would leave us with um, three hides. Is that okay? Go for it. I'm cool with it. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter to me at all. So, I'm sorry. I just I, I want like permission from more people, like from Israel. And I assume involved. like a lot of that stuff you guys got before I even got here. So I have like no stake in any of this at all. And Kit really wouldn't care either. Take take what you need, type thing. Mm -hmm. You keep taking the hits, big boy. It's all good. Get get yeah. all that armor. <laughs> you can use it. I, I honestly just was the Mark IVs take blood. They don't need hide, so you're good. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah. Plus, it's actually more of a defensive set of armor. So, it's it does have some tanking stuff, but it's a weird set of armor. Okay. Um, yeah. So just, um, I'll just subtract all the stuff I've on me and then after okay. I go to them. So this is going to function just like plate armor. It's, uh, you know, you're not going to get a, as far as, uh, the AC bonus here, just know it's, it's literally an 18, uh, yeah, yeah I know the AC bonus is 18. Of, it's the, the, the benefit the is the other things, right? So. <clears throat> and, um, okay, so we'd have three left here. Yeah, that should be it. And the gold cost. I gotta see, it looks like the uh, attributes I had it's not working. So let me see if I can find an example item here and see if I can copy it. They change. They're changing these attributes so many times uh, for these uh, melee weapon attacks because it's using the damage because they're changing all the language of it. Let me do my buddy system. Just need to make sure that this is going to be accurate. Oh, there we are. Oh, you got a really cool picture for it, too. All right, looks like the effect is working there. Let's go ahead and click it. The fly, the temporary, the passive is always there. You gain the fly speed for 30, which matches your movement. Advancing time removes it. Passive still there. Let's pick a charm. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the other thing here, I need to add to it that I forgot. And also in the description, I didn't specify that uh, further. Um, it says it's not half. 
uh, its full movement speed. I know there's an item that requires uh, your flight speed that the boots of flight that reduces your, it essentially takes your movement speed and then divides it by half. But this is a full, um, so if you dash, you get 60, right? Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, they've changed so much of the language. Please be um, I just need to check in advance. Is this an effect I can toggle? It says I can imbue. So is this an effect that, like, in character, I'd be able to toggle on or off? Because I need to know that if we ever bump into, like, automatons yes. again. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Are you oh, you're talking about... Oh, you're saying, like, I gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah so like it might, you're saying like, you're saying if i create, create a face of creature that's gonna eat my fire i want to be able to turn it up yeah that's fine mm -hmm. let's go ahead and uh let's see in the language is it yeah because it says review so you can choose to make each melee weapon attack Deal. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Now you have the, the optional choice. Uh, no dragons nearby? Great. Yeah, that was one of the things is that probably until I make the armor, I'm going to be checking for dragons after that i will be unattuning the helmet and checking if anyone wants it okay so you're offering up the helm of the dragon hunter to whoever wants it any takers yeah um i'll put that in chat that's that armor for weak people i don't do that okay okay well let's just stay in your inventory until someone no claims it and <laughs> Kid doesn't want to wear a helmet of a. You don't want to wear a judge dragon helm on that beautiful face of yours. It has dragon horns. It's the horns of a dragon. Literally, it's face, armor. It's for literally face a red dragon. Armor oh, is for weak. <laughs> Criticals. I love it. Hey, I I lived through it, right? That's true. <laughs> that is very true. I love and it. What was it? Two crits you rolled on that one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Big baby. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Michael thought he had me. I almost did. <laughs> not today. Okay. Um, they do. So, not today. So, Costas, you also uh, wanted to understand your gift? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you have gift of friends. You bond your life with another. As an action, you bond your life with another creature within 60 feet. Any damage or effect that the creature takes, you take instead. Bond lasts until you dis dismiss it with a bonus action, or you succumb to zero hit points or unconsciousness. Let's see this. Okay, so it's an action. It is goes beyond a warding bond. This is not just damage. It is effects as well, and you don't half the damage. You take all of it. Would I take um, it at the, as the same element? So, for example, um, Warding the... Bond says you can't resist it, but if they take fire damage and I have resistance to fire, do I take half fire damage? Correct. So I could use this on someone who's in the Kona Cold from something, and then no one takes any damage. If you are immune, yeah. Cool, okay. also the effects too so that person becomes dominated you become dominated as well well instead not as well correct mm, what do you think it says instead in the in the writing but yeah, you're saying instead. as well i almost had two of you now. it's just you yeah. okay <laughs> if i didn't throw shade at you lucas i ain't living no uh, it is instead. So you become dominated. They don't. 
So you basically, the issue here is that if they roll a saving throw, it's their saving throw for you. Oh, I use their saving throws? That's correct, because if they're impacted by the effect, it's now onto you. So their oh. saving throw is what rolls for it, and if they fail it, then you're automatically done. I'd say it'd be really cool if I could use my saving throws. Like just the paladin aura protection. It's um, your... It's, you if you want to use the gift, use the gift. I don't know what to tell you. It's your choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not complaining. No, no. <laughs> I've never complained. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so... Israel, I have you. You said that you talked about doing extra stuff for fifteen days. Yeah, but you yeah. weren't you weren't like final on anything. So, um, sure. well, as far as crafting goes, it's legendary procurement, and then uh, probably working in conjunction with Athala a lot on this uh, item. But lost time. Oh, are you talking about the item that Othala was wanting? You want to procure basically the stuff that for for Othala. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's for Othala, not yourself. Uh. What well, we were talking about the um the tome and just swapping it so, oh, okay, yeah, I see. So who gets the tome? So Athala gets the tome, mm -hmm. and then you make lost time. Yeah. Okay. Make sure the effect, because when I built this one and you want to discover this, this is a long It was a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. All right. Uh, update it for the new version of 5e. Last time it's in your inventory. Legendary amulet increases intelligence to 22. You manually are going to have to add the spell slots. And as a 10-minute action, uh, so it is clickable. And it just simply is saying it's clickable um, and cool. not all across the multiverse to an alternate version that has information about one past subject and the alternate version of yourself will provide their memories of the event that unfolded from their perspective in either a short phrase or a small lecture. Interesting. Great item. Yeah. Um, I also with that, I have a question about um, tunements. Um, so when you have a weapon that's magical, um, if you're not attuned to it, what do you lose? Like, does it not magical anymore? If you have an item that you're breaking attunement with, are you saying, well, it still maintain its magical properties? Right. It does. So, yeah, I was basically wondering, like, the keen short sword that I have, if I wasn't attuned to it, what am I losing? Is it just, like, losing the ability to use the keen portion? Do I still have, like, the pluses to attack? Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, hmm, yeah. Uh, it would be removing the magical abilities of it, uh, which pertain mainly to the critical threshold, so. Okay. What I was wondering. <clears throat> That and then, um, yeah, other than doing that crafting, just um, so what I can give you, checking. yeah, what yep. I can give you is we have to pick one because for you're going to be procuring this for the 30 days, so uh, basically scavenging the island, rubble, wreckage, anything you can find in Felgen, find to find these materials. Um, and you're going to be using your gift multiple times across those days and activating them. Um, 
and then also while doing these with half the globe of Duhlorim trying to map out the locations. So that's a lot to do while you're already procuring stuff. Um, well, I'm gonna the, go ahead. And the globe is in the vault, uh, in the amber vault. So I could take it out, you know, right before going to sleep. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I think I think one of these things is going to be something yeah, yeah. you can do before. That's you fair. Sleep. That 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 was what I was yeah. alluding to. Is yeah. just maybe pick one of these things, um, and that's something that we can we can definitely do. Well, would we be able to like, for example, like skip one of the nights of keeping tabs on Tali to do one of the other ones? Yeah, for sure. We don't need to do it every night. Yeah, that's fine. I think the I think the biggest one here would be the seek location of the one who hired. Yeah, that would be yeah. that would require you basically be on it multiple times trying to figure out information that would guide you. And even then, the information probably on that one would not yield anything of true actual success. Besides, I mean, even if you had a location, if it's a big city, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> true. Yeah. So that's really where it comes down to. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, more than welcome to pick one of those or you can just say, like, I do one of these for this many days or whatever, and then I can give you information based on that. Yeah, I mean, we're spending 30 days, so maybe just, like, the first two days, we'll just do, um... We're still gonna just see if it is a city, what the location of the one who hired Tally, even if okay. it's just general like that. And then day two, we'll do the Balzra clutch. And then every day after that, we'd just be doing check-in. Okay. Uh, so the uh, the location on the globe, uh, not necessarily needing the globe, but you can use it as the the map if that works. Uh, this is going to be Palin, which is the city on the south side of the uh, of the bay. Where a certain wizard was seen headed to, <laughs> I believe. Hmm. That would explain it. Curiosities. <laughs> yeah, that explains so much. <laughs> as far as the location of Tolly, uh, taking the time, it would be that Tolly is still there. And it worked for the Fendel. Nifendel. They just haven't moved. All right. Now the location of the Lost Clutch and the Obelisk seems using your gift on that yields random results. Oh. As if the object, most likely, or the eggs themselves around the object, or maybe just in general of where they've been taken. Or shielded. Okay. Good information. We have information understanding um, about ourselves as chosen. These time fracture obelisks as well. Understand that there are divination. Uh, powers to be able to stop divination, right? Certain magic to be able to stop divination. Could be that these eggs were found currently in the possession of somebody who then has worn a, an amulet of protection against those things. Maybe they're in a chest, right? Could be also in a bag of holding, which is not something your gift would be able to understand where it's at. Yep. Okay. That's good. Okay. Brewing, brewing, brewing. Yeah. So just uh, yeah. a uh, just a question on that. I, I know it's well. If I'm reading this right in the in the table, it's is it 15 days per for proficiency, and then 30 days for expertise, uh, or how be, does that? Well, brewing is a tool, so it would be 24 days for you if you want to be an expertise in brewing. Yeah, I'll do expertise in brewing. Sure, I, I'm sure that's going to help the party some way, shape, or form. Um, and then I have what six days left. Is that that did I do that right? Correct. 
Ah, uh, not much else I can do. Hmm. Can I use the remaining six days to develop the wayward whiskey? Sure. That sounds fine. Motion seconded. Motion <laughs> seconded. <laughs> Kit is, is very uh, helpful to the group when it comes to using his skills for useful stuff. Oh, yes. Is there going to be uh, have magical properties here? I'm sorry, say that one more time. You is broke up for have, me. Is it going to have magical properties at all? Uh, so I, I would like it to, um, how, however many you think it should be, but since Kit's always trying to intimidate people and can't, and alcohol gives you uh, typically the uh, the the false persona that you're you're a tough guy uh something to increase your intimidation for a period of time uh, uh up to you michael on on what you think it should be you know nothing crazy obviously but uh and, and probably so, nothing say it one more time so it, so I'll, I, yeah you're you're i know you're tired so i'm trying to typify it so my thought was the alcohol would increase your intimidation skill check if you okay. use it Okay. Because alcohol get and the linkage there obviously is alcohol gives you that always that if you drink enough that false persona, you know, of like being a tough guy. So basically our wayward whiskey it makes us scary. Right, yeah, so you so I you want adva it. advantage. Yeah, that works. That works. Perfect. On intimidation skill checks. For how long? Yeah. Uh so I would think that uh takes an hour to be processed by the liver standard drink. yeah so I, I would i would say you know man i'm trying to think here one minute i feel like yeah i think i think one minute's i, I was thinking either one one check like one skill check if you drink one uh you know type type deal but uh i think i think a minute's probably fair usually in like this is gonna be used for role play um, in the context of role play, a minute is generally regarded as the the fastest possible um, window. That works for me. That works for me. What a cool mechanic! Good job. <laughs> what a I mean, you know, story. I don't add much to the role play mechanics as a as a barbarian fighter, other than trying to scare the shit out of people. So I figured, why why not? <laughs> Are you going to make a whole line of whiskeys? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Now that I'm an expert brewer, you've made rage juice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the whiskey of persuasion, the whiskey of nature, whiskey of survival, Literally liquid courage. It, no, that's <laughs> yes, rage juice, liquid courage. All of that was exactly in my thoughts of what this, uh, what this would be. Lucky bastard whiskey. The <laughs> advantage on your next roll. Uh, I can think of a lot of fun. For this. All right, so brewer I'm, cre I'm creating it right now. You just got to go to brewer supplies and change them to expertise, and then make sure you're you're stating that you have some proficiency in your character sheet. I've noticed when I open yes, your character sheet, Dustin. By the way, it lags yeah. crazy for me. So, do, you, do I need to change it back for you to help? I don't think you need to. I just can't help you right now. So, you if you can do it yourself, okay. you can. But I cannot yep, somehow I'm good. access it right now. So, so I have brewer supplies with expertise at a plus ten on my tools right now. Okay. And then I am uh, in the process of creating the actual item. How many bottles are you making? I wonder, you know what? I wonder if it's because I have it open too. Cause I work off the, I like working uh, off the character might, sheet. It, by it's, the bar. It, it's entirely possible. I'm not going to put it past. So I think it is possible, but for now we don't have to worry about it. As long as you're able to do it yourself, it's fine. I just can't help you. Yeah. All, all, all good. Right. Um, Change that one too. That's for sure. Uh, these are going to do me no particular good. Does anybody want, uh, if not, I'll hold on to them, but does anybody want these tools of expertise? Lock picking help. It um, does require attunement, though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the catch. We can always just punch down doors. Uh, that. That's exactly what Kit would do anyway. I just figured I'd offer it up if we want to be quiet to somebody that could use it, but it, it's an attunement slot, so. 
I am really good with stealth. Um, I'll take them if we're if we're on a stealth mission. I can always attune them for the duration. Uh, those would be really useful. Yeah, like I have my stealth armor, so you know it's. Are you proficient in thief tools? Oh, that is Me. the question. Are you? Um, I am. Oh well, maybe they should go to you. So I don't think I am. I don't use the. Uh, I wouldn't use the attunement slot though. That's the only thing I have thieves tools regularly. I can just hold on to them as well. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not necessarily. I'm not not dexter dexterous. I, like I, I mean, I'm at 16 dex, so, um, and I do have an attunement slot, but I'm not proficient with thieves tools. Is the Yeah, I'm not proficient problem. either. I gotta change your seat. Oh. I'll change. I'll change it back. No, it's all good. We can stick with this one if it's easier for you. No, we can stick with this fine, one. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just putting them in right now. I'm gonna be five bottles. Actually, you probably get yeah five bottles for one one for each of you. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll pass it. I'll pass it around at the end of the thirty days as a as a celebratory. I I did something good for the group. Hell yeah! <laughs> in, yeah. in my mind, at least. Weird. Oh yeah, wayward whiskey, dope. <laughs> I, I I spent so long trying to figure out like what I could do in those thirty days to <laughs> to to be somewhat useful or just make it fun or whatever you know. So yeah, that's sick. That's great. Give me, I'll give you six. Very very potent, by the way. Very potent. <laughs> Cask strength, the way whiskey Change should your, be. Uh, character sheet back. Thank you, sir. Um, hey, Michael, if, it, if it's going to be too much of a problem, I can always change it back. It's not a... No, I think it's fine. Deal. It's probably, honestly, it, you know, once the DD 5 e that has gone through uh, an update to try to... Um, um, to try to fix some of these issues. And I'm wondering if... If you're having, particularly, maybe there's an effect or something like that on your actual thing that's causing that problem. I'm not, too, I'm not too worried about it. As long as it doesn't lag for you, it's fine. That's that's all I care about. Yeah, it's actually perfectly fine for me. Um, so <sighs> Okay. Uh so now come to Othala. All right, went ahead and put into your languages the time language, uh, gaining proficiency in that, sculpting an ice sculpture of Othala with the help of Ibrun. Um, If we're going to do 15, I mean, an extra 15 days, um, I'd like to make another ice sculpture. Two ice sculptures? Two, two ice sculptures? <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a plan for the other one, but I want to make two of them right now. I love it. I like it. Um, that's awesome. Okay. And then for the picture, this is a little bit, I just wanted to clarify why I had you, um, you want to use the photo, uh, that is on uh, the left. Exactly. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. And then two ice sculptures. So you're going to copy 6th level spell and 3 7th level spells. I already put them inside uh, my spell list. Uh, okay. I deduced the, took out the gold. Um, okay. So with the two ice sculptures, I'm going to cast Simulacrum on both of them. I'm going to make two copies of Odala. Uh, one is going to be named Zero. The other one's going to name One. And... Uh, they're going to just be helping me out while I'm here, but I okay. plan to leave one here with Corey. All right. In the spell description, I'm going to just keep notes. Um, what are the names? One is going to be zero. The other one is one. Zero and one. Okay. Put it in the actual spell for now, and then, we can, of course, we can create something for the duplicates uh, later on if they become something we need to put down. So you're going to have zero stay here? Uh, Most likely, yeah. I'm going to leave zero here and then take one. And then one's going to go here. OK. So you're shaping an illusory duplicate uh, out of the ice sculpture. Um, as it is, it's going to appear 
uh, the same as the original. Um, and again, it's going to be right. It's going to otherwise have the uh, statistics, except for a few few things um, that you are going to have. Really friendly, right? It's not going to be villainous. Um, and for Simulacrum, I try not to role play them simply because it's really you that you're embodying. So mm-hmm. I kind of allow you to role play with yourself. <laughs> um in more or less if it if like a familiar ten you know I, I put personalities to familiars because they are like spir- spirits that are like conjured from elsewhere right and they're kind of coming with something but this is literally you so you're just making more of yourself and so um you know if you if there's ever a moment i guess i should say right and you're wanting to uh uh you're wanting to role play or whatever with uh with your civil acrobat it's going to be Kind of you talking to you. Completely down with that. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, hmm. So with Muldrin's Gauntlet, um, since we're going to be here for a few weeks, I'm going to make a few items. Um, well, first I have to get the Simulacrums dressed. So I give them clothes, give them robes. Um, but for the one that's staying here, I'm going to make them a tool of expertise with the Tinkerer's tools. And then uh, I'm going to make an amulet of acuity. So those are the two items I'm going to make. For your illusion. One um the the expertise tools are gonna go to the illusion. The amulet will go to me. Okay. So zero will get the tools and then I'll get the amulet. Alright. Okay, so amulet of acuity is inventory. Uh you'll have to add those spell slots manually yourself, uh after clicking on tuning, and then you said zero is gonna get. The last of my time, um, I think I'll just read the book, um, Clear Thought, and get the plus two. And what what tool is the tool of expertise, Alchemist? Uh, Tinkerers. Tinkerers, sir. Create a, just a basic NPC right now, just to keep track of zeros in them for a. Check them out here, so that is And then you're yeah, gonna I'll be... also write down um, what spells they have prepared because uh, we're gonna be taking a lot of long rest, so I'll have the what spells they have prepared. Are you intending for? them to be fighting is that what i'm understanding um not really zero um i mean okay. one is uh maybe the one that's going to be fighting alongside oh, of us yeah um so i guess zero will be created before i make if i could could i read the tome before i make any of the simulacrum so that they have the 22 as well Okay. Trying to see which one we need to prepare for combat. I guess it's going to be the... The one is going to be the one. All right, intelligence score increased to 22. I'll remove items from the list of people. Is one getting any magical items? 
Um, I will give him the staff of warding. Um, we have a leather jerkin in the bag of holding, a regular one. Put that on them. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna delete all these items in here. I'm gonna transfer it over. I'm gonna I keep. I'm gonna keep robes. I imagine they're gonna be dressed or they're gonna be naked. No, yeah, Zero's gonna have robes on. You know, they're gonna have clothes. You could go full clone vibe. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's so many things in this house. Oh boy, that's a lot of things. I just delete all these one by one. Oh boy. That is gonna be a lot easier than that. Let me at least just I'm just gonna remove stuff that I know is there that has magical properties for now. I'll leave the rest of the stuff in here. I have some extra magic items if you want to give them to your simulacrums or I was actually um gonna ask if I could take uh, one of the rings of protection and the uh, wand of polymorph to give to to one. Yeah, um, I also the ring of shooting stars, like the one that uh, I'll be honest, I don't know how much use for it anymore. And if that you want to great, that. yeah, yeah. Sure. I've got a uh, ring of regeneration that I just unattuned. If you want to use that, mm, how would you let that work, Michael? Because it costs a hundred gold to repair a simulacrum per health point. Would the Ring of Regeneration go against that, or...? It would go against it. Ah. Similar acrim is not identified as organic matter. Mm -hmm. so. Ah! No, don't do that. I'm picking... <laughs> it's been all awesome. said. Don't trade a quest. Okay, try. Not, don't trade anything yet. <laughs> I'm deleting things. <laughs> if you intend to use... Michael, well, if you intend request. to use one in battle, I have to prepare one. Yeah. So, you gotta give me a second here. Uh, Othala. Mm. I could, I mean, I don't necessarily need it. What up my AC if I took a ring of protection? I, I could offer you a cloak of endurance, which is resistance to non-magical physical damage that I don't need. If you would be willing to give up the ring of protection. Ring of protection doesn't add to AC. Does, doesn't it? Not in this. Oh, saving setting. throws. Yeah, yeah saving never mind. Throw. I was thinking of something else. I'm sorry. It gives you also, you know, reactions to getting advantage on a saving throw. You still want? Yeah, it. I already. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah. No, I thought it was AC. I was looking to increase my AC, but I can still give the cloak of endurance to you either way if you want it for one of them. Hey, that sounds good to me. We're gonna have two. I mean, I when I, when I rage it when I when I rage it uh, pretty much does that anyway, right? So. Mm -hmm. Can they use heavy uh, armor? No. Okay. I got I got two things for you. Still has my proficiency. <laughs> I mean, you have a level in artificer. I don't know. It's, it's only light armor. Let me give you that. And let oh, I have light and medium. Sorry. That. There you go. So wait, are these things permanent? Yeah, they're literally just permanent illusions mm -hmm. that he's creating. Yeah, like, although they don't like I attack they... and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> As long as he has gold and stuff to be able to pay for the spell reagents, you can do it. They're very expensive, though. Like, extremely mm -hmm. expensive. Yeah, although I don't think they regenerate spell slots, do they? Nope. Which, yeah. Do they regenerate health? Nope. Yeah, so that's why giving them magic objects that, like, have charges and, like, can let them heal is really... Yep. I just spent uh, a few thousand gold on them. Well, do you... Want the uh, wand of fireballs then? I think that's Joe's thing, man. You know, uh, the simulacrum I mean... has a wand of polymorph. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. He still has my spells and my features, you know, so there's still things he could do. Still, though, like if you have a body double that can't regain spell slots, having another person in turn able to cast fireball if we need it while I can mm -hmm. still attack with um, my barrage. Or multi attack volley. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. If he dies, do we lose the items though? Let's hope he doesn't die in like a lava pit. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, <laughs> I think it's the same he I think it's the same way as if any of us die, just like a corpse. We can... Um 
yeah, I don't know how to trade with your simulacrum, so uh, let's just oh, I just get the... right to a follow. I didn't know either. <laughs> you can drag all items that you want to trade. Just drag onto the token that should receive them. Okay, cool. I think. Hopefully. Oh, it says I'm dropping it. Yeah, to the to the person. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that match. That's that token. Okay. One. Okay. Uh, we're gonna get shooting stars. Uh, does he want the helm of the dragon hunters? I don't have that. I don't have that anymore. Or like. Hmm. What is it adding anything, or is it is it heavy armor? I mean, it's not really. It's a helmet, but it doesn't count as armor. It's just it would it would let him detect dragons and it would give him advantage on frightful presence and breath attacks, saving throws. Sure. Yeah. And is we're just is loading one the these guys up, man. <laughs> is one the one that's coming with us? Yeah. Oh, does he have a gem of brilliance either? They do not. Okay, cool. Take that. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else extra. Unless they want, like, a hammer. <laughs> I think that's a... Uh... Yeah, let me see. Cloak of Endurance. Oh, I have to put the armor on. He's still technically naked for the cape. I'm guessing that Ring of Regeneration isn't automatically programmed in the 1d6 every 10 minutes. Because I've is. had this like the entire campaign, damn near. Ring of Regeneration? Used it. No, there's no yeah. effect. There's no effect on it at all. Yeah, yeah but the first simulacrum, that's really super useful since they don't naturally regenerate. Yeah, it doesn't work on the simulacrum, unfortunately. I'm just making a mental note to actually remember I have that damn thing, because I, I never pay attention to it. And there have been a few long fights where I've like just had low health the entire time. Could have added a little bit more. Just chug it away. Yeah, it's something you just you got to remember. I, it's not a really good way to automate it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I mean, now that you have the uh, Blood Fury tattoo, I don't think you'll ever be low on health again. <laughs> Dude, this thing is so cool. Yeah, yeah man, that's. I'm pretty sure every single per person in our like party that uses a weapon is like just lined up for one. Everybody would love one, yeah. So, <laughs> if we can find more demonic eyes, by all means, let's carve them suckers out. We need six more for the next one. Oh, six more. Uh, hey, Michael, you got any more Baylor's hidden back there? Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wouldn't you like to know yeah like can we dig too deep real quick <laughs> yeah I bet no oh <laughs> you wish alright is one established I believe so um yes uh actually does anybody have a shield or no I don't think we have any shields right I have an extra shield yeah that's the only thing they need um they technically have the lowest AC out of all of us. So, but 17 is what they got. Is 
the medium armor? Right now they have the proof leather jerkin, so. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. I'll need to do some more crafting at some point. I think this is all right for now. I think this is really good. He has a lot of magic items um, kitted up, caught up to speed with everybody. They have the same knowledge as, as me. They retain all the information. They just don't gain new information. So, well, can they learn stuff or? No. He can remember things. It's not like he, he has short-term memory loss, but yeah. he just can't learn new skills and stuff like that. So okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Because the way you were saying it, I was like, is this just like a <laughs> few at this exact moment? They can only re respond to nah. like. <laughs> Yeah, every five minutes walking around some new place. Whoa, guys, where the hell are we? How do we get here? What's going oh, yeah. on? Sad time loop for a clone. Yeah, dude, basically like dementia clone. Yeah, we've created a fucking Alzheimer's patient. <laughs> uh, um, um, yeah, I think last thing, uh, I can't, I couldn't get the scroll into my inventory uh, for the eighth level. Into Othala's inventory? Yeah. What scroll? Uh, spell scroll for 8th level clone. You do in your inventory. Spell scroll clone. In consumables? Yeah, of clone. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, there? Michael. Um, Are you talking about a spell scroll or in your actual spell list? No, just a spell scroll because I can't copy it yet. All right, I put it in there. It might be lagging, which is possible in your sheet. It is in your... Yeah, most sheet. likely. I'll, I'll reload. Okay. What's up? So... Um, I kind of just thought of this. It should not take any time, so I don't think it's an issue. Oh my god. Um, could I use my status as a rune guardian to get a copy of a bestiary to go? Like, just in common, like a big-ass book with, like, every single animal, like, super detailed descriptions of them. Beasts? Of beasts? Yes, of beasts. Just beasts. So you can increase your summoning repertoire? Yes. <laughs> My other group already has a bard that has a petting zoo that walks around with him. Now I, I have to I, deal with it with you. <laughs> I have animal handling. Don't tempt me. At least he can only do one at once. I'm <laughs> just curious to hear more about this petting zoo, yeah, though. They're, they're not hey, Faith, how many destroyers? does he have? Like, <laughs> like three of them now that he has? Because yeah. he has the wolf, he has the pegasus, and he has a... Uh, I don't even know what you call it, but we call him the world destroyer because yep. he... <laughs> One of the other guys was feeding him bacon, and he put his fingers in his mouth, and it wasn't like the what he felt just wasn't good. So, but he carries it like they're out all the time. He carries them around with us. Oh, it's so bad. Can I meet your bard? This... And they all end in O, so it's like po and toe. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> po toe and flow. Like what is... all right, Costas, you're <laughs> no. in the library. C two six flutters down. Hey, C two six. I would just like a bestiary in common with very accurate diagrams and descriptions of as many animals as possible. They don't have to be from Arthuria. Calculating. Aha. I have what you're looking for. One moment. Comes back. In a large book. Leather bound. Mm -hmm. Animal flesh. Here we are. It is called the Monster Manual. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. I take a look inside the Monster Manual, flip through its pages. Um, I see. Is it alphabetically organized, or like how is it divided up? It is alphabetically organized. With the glossary Perfect. at the back. Yeah. Can I get one of these copied to go? Certainly. Man, it's so easy now. <laughs> we don't aggro giant mechs or nothing. Mm. 
not even in character excuse to be looking at the monster manual. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad idea, really. No, I mean, it makes a lot of yeah. sense to me. You handed me a copy of the monster manual. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I guess you're summoning dinosaurs now. But only underground, right? <laughs> only underground. <laughs> of course. All right. Put an item as a keep holder called monster manual. It's the monster manual. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> but we know you really want. What do I really want? <laughs> to know everything there is to know about all the monsters you face? I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> what the hell? How am I supposed to know, man? All right. Now coming to at the end of this uh, downtime, any time that you all wish to interact or talk with Porig. That's truly the question. Obviously, we had some persuasion, religion stuff, getting information, obviously, in the lore in the downtime. But there is opportunities here that you could potentially interact with Porig more so than you have before. And also, you never did do any of... None of this downtime actually corresponds to dealing with Mark 8. So the Labyrinth is still not really accessible. And I'm imagining in my head, as far as getting materials and other things, if you're going to be going to that area, most likely using the transmogrifier and just getting them quick and then getting it. I'm not going to roll initiative or anything for that. But those are two things uh, that this party did not get to that they talked about in the previous time. People talked about talking with Porig more so uh, and kind of having a conversation with them. Um, even just like a personal conversation, perhaps, in trying to figure out who they are, what's going on, more so than what is uh, the craziness, try to get them in a common place. Uh, and then the other thing was the markets, just seeing there's so many of them, right? Go back up. <laughs> Got no pressing feelings either way. I would try. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in the same, same boat. You want me to come intimidate them, I can come intimidate them for you. I don't think that's necessary, Kit. Honestly. You try persuading them? <laughs> Maybe it's just a friendly conversation. I think both of them are pretty confused. Both versions. Plus, I'd like to leave Zero here with them. You know, he does seem like pretty lonely and be good to have somebody to talk to, at least. Maybe help him out with the situation if we're not here. You just want me to come behind you with my arms crossed to look really mean. Yeah, you know, I think Kit could really help facilitate things. He's only two feet tall, though. But, All right. Yeah. Let's just find... whatever you do, do not smoke out of that pipe. It's a bad <laughs> idea. Mm, that's what killed you, right? That is correct. Mm. Although part of me is curious to see what it would do now, but... Uh, yeah, I don't... You know... One dirty Joe is enough. You never know what else will pop out of my mind fractures too. Well, I'll let Othal do all the talking. I'm just there to look scary. Lean forward. All right, giving you a prompt for a long rest, 18 days uh, is what we're going to transpire. Uh, and then the conversation happened within the, you know, uh, 18 days as far as the mainland, 30 days for you in the aisle. Conversation can happen any time in time. I just want to specify before I, uh, I forget you're in a new month, Zeran Tier. Um, and in oh. fact, you have actually gone into the new year. So you will be celebrating hey. a New Year's even day while you're on yeah. the so choose to have a little party. Most likely with Kit. Getting things together with the new brewing master over here, producing the whiskeys, getting absolutely right drunk, finding some of uh, the niche party materials that the fellow gnomes have to offer. Maybe some, a couple of little type things, you know, those things that I kind of crank around. I don't know what they're called, but I, I, does anybody the know what those things the, are? They the, spin around, they make the, the noise. sound? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's no, such an old timey thing, about. but I feel like that's exactly what they would have here, uh, you know, 
Uh, some of those ones you blow in, right? They kind of shoot outwards and they come back and make noise, little horns, right? Um, I think that is exactly what they'd have here for in festivities. You're able to find that. Maybe include Porig, perhaps, uh, in the midst of that New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Anyways, the 10th of Xantir will be what it is upon the end of the downtime to 30 days. Uh, the 18 days have surpassed uh, on the mainland, which is that 10th. Uh, and of course, we kind of correspond time always with that. Uh, and the 10th of Xantir actually is an event. It's a, a world event here. And it does have a festival associated with it in the world. Uh, it is known as the Eclipse of the Stars. And it's actually where uh, there are several uh, yearly comets that actually streak through. And they actually are pretty bright through the uh, sky. So people are able to maybe head out into the island and look up into the sky. And take a look at some of those big, massive comets as they streak through. All right. We're going to go ahead and transfer over everybody to a chamber here. You have actually not been in here. This is uh, the Chamber of the Archmage. I, one of them anyways. There's many different chambers of these. They're just simply named that because they're the chambers inside of the tower. Of the and the teleporter here opening a door. That's how you came in. And here is a study. And there is a handle over here, but it does not seem to be uh, like a door frame necessarily. Perhaps their security measures just not represent as a door icon. Very tight, small space. This is the eating-ish area here. Again, Belgium consists of gnomes. <laughs> so, in terms of size, <laughs> this makes a lot of sense. My, what a large room you have. <laughs> I mean, for boring, this is pretty big. <laughs> Bro, you, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> So there's a fireplace here roaring with a greenish flame. It actually does not produce smoke, and it seems to have an outlet uh, maybe to the interior of the tower, going out and then up maybe through the wall, who knows. Um, there's very little in the kitchen. In fact, it's just a few furnishings and uh, a, var a lot of different types of potions on a shelf, as they claim. Um, and there is an assortment of uh, cutlery and uh, you know, plates and such. Um, Porig is going to use one of those potions, begin to pour them into a bowl, Using some magic, they begin to grow into food. Actually meals. Like full full meals. Mm. Particular. A nice uh, prime rib uh, here. Cut up into slices for you all. Slab them on. Serving lunch. Or it does. State of Porig is uh, relatively the good state. It's not the aggressive state, peaceful one. They're in the impression uh, of Costas, who has been uh, meeting with them as gaining tutor, that they are tutor to you all. Costas, you've been uh, acting as if you were a student and that you've been getting uh, tutorship from Porig in order to reveal the information as well as uh, beginning to persuade. You've encountered the other body. What you understand, Costas, is that uh, Porig uh, in this personality is the headmaster of when Felgum actually was in its prime before the Talthars came to destroy and dismantle this place. And then the rude and aggressive Porig is the one who actually witnessed Damdar on this isle. They did hear. gone into any more information beyond that as the rude and aggressive one it's not something you wanted to truly encounter you wanted the peaceful one and the peaceful one had all the correspondence from the time is what your information was gathering you only tried to bring peace to Porig when they reverted to the angry and aggressive state so you can get to the peaceful gentle one eat in enjoy I don't have all the table for all of you but it has been some time. A labyrinth is more of an occasion of a social, but uh, I've uh, heard from your friend here that uh, there's been some trouble with some of the constructs down the labyrinth. I'm off limits now. <clears throat> um, 
to uh, find a chair, maybe a stool, perhaps. It's magic, casting invisible chairs. Take a seat. I sit down. Go into the shelf cabinet, pull out a bottle, uncorking it. Brandy. Bring these little brandy glasses. A toast to the new year. Ah. Happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Oh. I just hands his to Kit. <laughs> ah. Ah. And he really does kid me sometimes. Oh, he's good stuff, though. You got good taste there, buddy. It feels like this has aged hundreds of years. Oh. Well, that's a sign of quality right there. Quality. <laughs> yes. Maybe one of the initiates played a prank on you. Oh, aged the wine with a spell. Damn, students. When, when Kit gets Costas, he'll swirl it around the cup, take a little sniff, swirl it around some more. Take another little sniff, a little bit on the tongue. Now that he's a master, master, master. brewer. Just getting... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you fucking sommelier over this bitch? <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then uh, he'll he'll as he takes that little sip instead of like spitting it back in the cup, he'll just down the rest of it and hand the empty cup back to Costas. Go back behind. He'll follow with his arms crossed, trying to look really mean. That is awesome. Oh, so you've turned kid into a cork sniffer. <laughs> Well, we begin the social hour of the new year with business, of course. What do you students have for me? How is your lectures going? Oh, uh, the lectures are great. Uh, your tutoring has been incredibly helpful. Oh, wonderful. Um, yes, certainly, especially the historical lessons. Those have been fantastic. Oh, wonderful. History one, one, is... com one complaint we would have, though, is, you know, the Mark 8s. I've been running amok here and there. It's been a great year, but I think we'd like to do something about that. So that no one has to worry about them. Well, that, would be, well, that would be the responsibility of the high olive. So if we could get the high artificer to sign off, you would... Um... Oh, I have no business with any of those constructs. It's not my, 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 it's not my discipline. A bar case, so, yeah. Um, machines um, built for war. It's a trouble thing. Um, previous marks, um, Mark IVs, they were... Uh, constructed for a humanitarian endeavor. And now, with the later series, it would seem with the threat of what looms, perhaps, and the conversations of the mainland we've overheard, it could very well be that we need to defend ourselves. So if we wished to uh, have the Mark 8s modified in some way, we would speak to hard, higher artificer... Uh... I'm forgetting the name. What was the? It's so hard to pronounce. Ooh. What's that, young lad? Yes. How did you pronounce the higher officer's name again? So I can. It's been. It's not quite uh, normal in my region. Yes. Well, high officer in charge. I have to look at. Where is it? Let's find it, Joe. Right now, you would see uh, Costas as the reincarnated Rune Guardian, right? <laughs> oh my God. The High like... Artificer's name is Doug. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like frozen right now. <laughs> Reload it here. It's Doug. Okay. Yeah, that'd be super funny. <laughs> so hard to yeah. pronounce. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm from Elvish descent. It's Doug, it's really hard for me, okay? <laughs> Pronounced Daug. Get it right. Yeah, Daug. <laughs> Doug. It's Dao, the G is silent. Do. Do. Uh, do. Yeah, we don't have the G sound in my language, so it's like 
Maybe it's Dog. more of a French, like a douche. Douche, douche. 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 Oh, God. Merivine. Yeah, my Merivine um, said hi out of his uh, the posting. Uh, um, very um, uh, elegant gnome. Um, mm, it should help you out. You know where their oh, office is located? Well, oh, um, uh, one of the chambers here of the Dark Mage, they were able to hold uh, in the high artificial position, of course, the high of the house here at Velvet. Might be able to make your way to the chamber. Do you happen to know any, like, uh, other hobbies? Like, you know, if we went to grease the wheels a bit, what would we, like, bring them? Like, cinnamon rolls? Well, hmm. As far as a delicate dessert, I imagine you could make them a souffle. Souffle, souffle would be good, sufficing of a position of high artifices. Quite, uh, quite um, rich, succulent. I would say they don't take office hours in the chamber. Generally is off limits. Um, generally, uh, there's a, a work order request and uh, down the docket. Um, You'd have to file a work order request uh, with your professor. I could impose that could be me, a headmaster, though. I might be able to process a work order for all of you. Okay, the uh, the rune guardian here has urgent business to it. The rune guardian? I didn't recognize you. Hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, I just got a report. There's some interesting new demon restraining spells coming out of one of the initiates. They've really interesting developments. I must go talk to them about it. <laughs> See, why you gotta go with making things more complicated? <laughs> yeah. Who is this? Ah, well, Goffley like like a student that was uh, I was teaching and tutoring for the last day of weeks. Um, <laughs> Guardian didn't recognize you. Um, uh, need a work order processed? Of course, you know that you're more than welcome to the Hyde Officers' quarters. It's just the students. Yeah, yeah. Surely you have um. Oh. Well, It's no consequence. I'm going to help you. Well, I must be on my way. Um, oh, leaving so have soon. Have a great new year. Oh. Well, bye. Later. Oh, right. that's my study room, Guardian. Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I, I get turned around a bit. <laughs> I get turned around. <laughs> uh, so for the rest of you students um, that was the rune guardian um, get the name ah uh, yes well I'm afraid I must attend to him as well I've, uh, apprenticeship oh right Just well, a... very well quick question before we do leave um, yes if you were to you know, have these Mark 8s patrol the school grounds on a protective state, how would you go about that? Or maybe maybe reverse that? Just your your way. How would I reverse? What am I about, guy? <laughs> if they're on patrol, like if the, the units are on patrol and going haywire, how would he go about reversing that? Ah, well, as far as I know, the Mark IV uh, prototypes are uh, constructed with a very powerful crystallic orb. We have ingeniously designed using the waters of the, the power with the chaos imbued and the circuitry feeds off of the core. You will need to remove it to power them down. If not, they will continue their programming. Um, there is a memory interface. Um, inside of 
the torso segment, as far as I understand, we might be able to remove the chip, but most of the programming can be done from outside of it. Interesting. And is it dangerous to remove the core with, say, our hands or things? Do you need anything to remove it, especially? There's been proper uh, precautions taken to ensure that it does not be destroyed inside of the balancers, stabilizers of the construct. This is not my forte. You should really speak to the artificer about this. Are you a tinkering sort? Maybe you become yeah, an artificer. Is that your discipline? It sort of is, um, but you know, I, I've always heard of the words of Headmaster Porrick and, you know, listening to you talk about it is inspiring. Oh, well, flattery. Thank you. Time since a student has given me flattery. I never was a tinkering sword, though. It was more in a theoreticals of Gollum manuscripting. Ingenuity is uh, not lost even on the most educated. Say, if I recall, I've seen the high officer and artificers, they were um, programming those uh, marks with uh, the remote of some sort. Perhaps you might be able to learn from that if you want to learn uh, Gollum programming. Some relic of the Mark IVs, uh, maybe five inside of the factory, but of course off limits unless you have the rank of artificer and high officer. Yeah, I've, I think I've heard of these. Um, a transmogrifier, right? Well, but more or less. Um, Transmogrifier is uh, more of a, a device that is able to intercept, um, used uh, mainly to hinder the uh, wavelengths of the frequencies, so you may be able to challenge the circuitry, stall them for a bit. Was uh, suppose the enemies of uh, Felgum could eventually make one of these. You're more or less looking for something that would be attuned to the marks and to that direct circuit. They were held in uh, with the officers and high artificers in the factory. But, uh, you have to get the rank, of course. Of course. Thank you, Pork. I think I have to catch up to the main guardian. Yes, of course. We tap the pipe onto the table. Is there anything else? Oh, no, no. I think we should be. All right, then. Thanks for the social, students. By the... Joe's going to kick back and enjoy the rest of the social. Sipping brandy, playing his loot, chit-chatting. Not talking about anything like in particular. <laughs> they, smake, they smoke their pipe. They stare. What? The hell... Scratch that idea. <laughs> Joe's getting the hell out of there. <laughs> Where are you going? Come back here. I'm Me late too. for class. Gotta go. Bye. You leave too. Get, are you, did you leave as well? Uh, I'll just look at him. And then I'll leave. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, so we're going to make this uh, short and sweet um, and try to kind of wrap some things up, I suppose, with Felgum. What you're looking for is something similar to the transmogrifier. You already have an understanding of how to make one uh, as you repaired the one that you have. The transmogrifier is more or less what they were talking about is something that they would use as an enemy would use against their constructs. Like if they had a tinkerer or something that was, um, you know, learning about certain things with the actual 
uh, memory of the constructs, write the circuitry, then they might be able to impose an actual wavelength against them and shut them down, like stun them, which is what the effect is, right? And that's what they feared. And that's what that's what the transmogrifier was that the crazy Porig had made. So now you know that the old Porig actually knew what they were, and they probably knew how to make them. They just were doing that because they need to understand something in order to fight back against it, right? Um, and the Mark the Mark Eights were already existing in the time of the old Porig, and they said that they were made potentially to go to war in defense of Felgrim against those who would arrive in the mainland. As we know by history, they just never were deployed. Right. So this Porig, most likely, their memory-wise, this is like right before the actual attack. What you're looking for is something that is actually attuned to the memory chips inside of those columns. Something that actually is going to hold the memory, the brain of the construct, and has all of the programming that makes the construct do what it's doing. In order to access that, you either have to stun them with the transmogrifier and then individually, one by one, begin to gain into the torso segment, unbolting it, and then get into it. Or you have to find a device that can send a frequency specifically attuned to those chipsets and begin to program them, also using the language that they use to program them. You have somebody that oh, is now proficient with the language of time. They were using this language as a basis for the ones that they used to program them. So you really, all you need to do is try to get a high enough tinkerer's check at this point to create some form of a radio to then access them and begin to reprogram. That's what I was going to ask if we could find like schematics from the old high art. It's all in the, the factory. It's not going to be in the yep. high officer's office. They're never going to store those documents in a, in a place that students potentially can, can kind of trespass in. All right. I mean, I, I'd give it a shot. I'll definitely give it a shot. Yeah, it's basically just trying to spend some time tinkering. Now, we already kind of are in midst of the downtime. This is a conversation we had you know, sometime between during the New Year's Day. That's what we're feeling with the narration. This is going to add more time. So if you're going to discover this radio and try to make it, we're potentially looking at another day here. Which in the cycle means... Another week. We lose the time another advantage. Week. It'll be another week, yeah. Um, if we want to leave now, I, I have no problem leaving. I can probably give that task to zero and see if they can accomplish it themselves. That's why I have them here. Um, they do have expertise tinkering tools. They are. Did, 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 what magic items do we give zero? He has the expertise tinker tool. He doesn't have no magic. They have the expertise tinkerers tools. Um, they have expertise. No, they have efficiency in tinkerers tools. Um, they have ability. They have ways to loop their checks, but I think it will work. He has the twenty two in intelligence. I think I think they can make the check. How easily could they get to the factory? Because the factory might be protected. The factory is destroyed. The it's destroyed. Are destroyed. Oh, the Tal Tharson destroyed it. The vats lead to the factory, but it's destroyed, so even if we went through the vats or any other way, it'd be going to rubble. Yeah. The, they destroyed it. Mm -hmm. They did not want any of the technology inside of the factory to fall into the Tal Thor hands. But they can't move all of... They can't destroy the Mark 8s because they're that powerful. They can either bury them which they attempted to do, but it only destroyed the factory. It didn't actually destroy the tunnels where the markets are stored in the cooler, which is an accessible place physically around the labyrinth. Okay, then yeah, just Zero will have no problem with the tinkering check. It might take him a few attempts, but if we leave him here for multiple weeks, he'll crack it. Okay, so Zero is going to attempt to crack this and begin to reprogram the markets. Yeah, he'll okay. do that alone by himself, and I'll give him the mission of doing that as stealthily as he can, and if anything happens, to run away. Yeah, yeah. And we give him a copy no, of the chest No armor! 
Because Zero doesn't have any armor. <laughs> yeah, he just has robes. He has robes. That's it. I mean, he's he has spell slots. <laughs> he can teleport. He cannot teleport. He can misty stuff. <laughs> and dimension door. He that's as far as he's getting. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> We can do spell scrolls, we, spell scrolls, right? Should we give him a copy yeah. of the transmogrifier? Like, can we make a new? Yeah, but I mean, what are we talking about here? What do we want Zero to do? Okay, they got a job to do. Okay, it's just yeah. like it's just like the little bird down to the coal mine. Okay, <laughs> <They> got, <laughs> <laughs> poor Zero. If we lose the bird, it's all right. We know that the coal mine ain't safe. <laughs> it's okay. This is what he's made for. But like, seriously, is it easy to make a copy of the transmogrifier and just give him it in case? <laughs> it took me a while to make it, it but I now know how to make it. Um, I guess yeah. giving Zero knows the schematics. He's me, so they'll they can make it on their own. Well, that's what I would assume yeah. that they would do is they would make one of mm -hmm. those and then yeah. they would they would stun them and then they would go to work. Right. Okay. Making the radio eat the other, you know. Right. Because I'm trying to imagine doing this without a transmogrifier. And that is... <laughs> oh no, that's suicide. <laughs> that's suicide. It's gonna work. I just pictured you with all a, like having a radio controller, almost like a fucking Fallout, right? It's probably like a Pip thing, right? Yeah, like, it's a Pip boy. <laughs> Like have a fucking construct. <laughs> Come down top, you super slow. <laughs> oh, that's uh, so good. Zero. The Four worst zero. hacker. Worst hacker. Yeah. yeah. All right. Make Anything sure to make the, the constructs loyal to us above zero. Don't don't let your simulacrum but I thought the program was right now just to reprogram them so they're not gonna fucking try to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that I the can... program is that like they're friendly to us. That, I I just wanted to we're friendly to them, you know, uh, if we can further get control later on, I think that's cool. But yeah, right well, now, it's going to be, it'll be more or less, let me cut you off, but it's going to be more or less like an actual like command or something you can give to them because they can't personalize, they can't personally recognize you unless you're there, but you're not going to be there. So what they're, they're going to put input in to the memories is essentially a command that only you all know that you can utter to them that it signifies that they're, you're a friendly, and not a hostile. Mm -hmm. That's great. Rutabaga. Ouroboros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> Suppose you have to come to something with it with it with time. We'll figure it out. Um I think um after that when the mission is done, um whenever he zero finishes to I'm allowing them to use one of their spell slots to cast sending. Um to inform us back. Or if he can, yeah. Just cast sending and inform us that is good. Do things well. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else with Elgum? Let's go kill an assassin, huh? Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Are the Mark Apes capable of crafting like carpentry? Just imagine them like knitting <laughs> in a corner. <laughs> because we can have Felgum. We can have him program the Marcades to start building out a town, and then by the time we get back, there's like a fully sketched out like no robot slave labor. They're war me. machines. Oh, they are just, literally yeah, huh. built to kill things. So they're probably really good at cutting down trees and carrying lumber. So this, welcome to the town of the Wayward Ones. This is our orphanage <laughs> where we have brought you screams. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that would be literally cost. <laughs> the Marquette have built this screams. <laughs> and here oh. is our state of the art medical facility. If you have any broken bones, rest assured you will not have any bones anymore. Anymore. <laughs> Amputations is our top surgery that we can do. <laughs> Amputations the best is our surgeons in the world. Giant meat cleaver just. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my uh, god. So, plan uh, is we're going to get back to the boat, Jonathan Yon. We're going to set sail. Are we going to take the boat all the way back to a Lathan? Are we going to teleport off the boat? I I think the plan is to teleport off the boat once we're sufficient 
efficiently. And are we away. teleporting? Are we teleporting to Ormar? We teleporting. Yep. Okay, we're teleporting to Ormar. Well, Ormar group was... call either. We can go Are right to the area One question. where the assassin is. We could, well, yes, but we're less familiar with that, and that could go wrong with the teleport. Well, yeah. I'll let you all hash it out, but if you yeah. go to Ormar, I will tell you there is a risk that if they understand your plan, they're going to try to tell you not to do what you're going to do, because they cannot allow you to cross the river. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Also, so, um, it might be best to wait for the assassin to think they have a drop on us, then teleport like in on them again. Well, yeah. They've been spending the last 30 days in the same spot. Like 18, right? Because 30 was... Yeah, 18. yeah, but they're still there at their home. If we want to actually get the drop on them, we should teleport in as close as we possibly can. Yes. Because they're going to have ears and eyes all over the forest, like advanced warning systems, whether it's scrying or just talking to the druids that are there. It's like, Okay. We don't want to give our game away. We just pop right on top of her as close as we can. We end up where we end up. You know, there's a chance we end up in a monster's lair or something, but I think that's a chance we need to take. You think, um, really? Okay. I was just going to say, it's like, we have no idea, like, of the surroundings there. So we, true. The risk still, for teleportation fuck-ups is so big. Yeah, like, teleportation fuck up. Like, we could maybe even go to Lathan and see if we could, like, try to buy an item from Ormar, like a tapestry no, no. or something. Ormar, we're good. Ormar, Ormar we have. Yeah. Yeah. But you, if we try fine. to just you, drop on seen... top of her. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's why. Because that's just a. That's, that's like a completely. What, in context of teleportation, it is a. You basically have to roll a D100, and you have a very low percentage chance of landing on the scene. And if you don't land, if you basically roll back, that begin that gets multiplied with miles that you're off. But hold on, we we've been well. I shouldn't say that. I think we have. We scried on her during this time period, right? Not not scrying per se. It's technically just using the gift to show us the general location. So would that would that not also count as being familiar with the area if we've done it so much? No, you'd have to see. You'd have to see it. You'd have to see that, the area to become. Oh, so the, okay. The so, so the gift you have doesn't let you see the area. It just gives right. you a a general. Right. Okay, I was thinking that it was a, a something very similar to scrying, just a little yeah, more limited. That's I'm why sorry, I wanted to I, cut I miss, in and say that yeah. I wanted to scry when while we were on the boat. Um, before we got off, um, I would have took one day at least to scry on her to see the area, and I can oh, yeah. take the ribbon out and then give it to Israel. To know where it's at, yeah, it works. They yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just misunderstood what your what your gift actually did. I thought it was like a more simplistic scrying spell, essentially. So I, I got and it now. if Costas has the oh. note from Tali, though, that's something personal from her. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. She literally go. kissed the note. There might be like DNA and shit on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold, hold <laughs> on. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have you do the intelligence check, Jay. And then hold on. Okay, because you're you're onto something here, but I think that it might. Do you all a worse thing that I want to see? You tell you, okay. mm. oh, yeah, 23. Okay, you if you scry on somebody and that person knows mm -hmm. that you're scrying on them, mm -hmm. that becomes a problem for you all the way. So, if yes. you're going to scry yeah. on them and they figure that out, they could literally be in the fucking pit before you know it. Yeah, that, yeah, that that is, that's the risk. That's that's the high risk of it. It's it's what yeah. we want if we want to do that. That's I'm just throwing it out there. We can see her exact location. I can give the ribbon instantly to Israel. Yeah, and teleport there instantly. You have the lips. But, um, yeah, it just comes to probability. You let be, it comes down to probability of the teleport and then tracking at that point. Once you teleport, if you, even if you're off, you'll be a miles off. You have to track and kind of find where you're supposed to go at that point. After the fact, uh, you have a ranger in your party, so. Yeah. You have someone capable of moving through. The problem would be chancing upon Zalnir and then having to potentially fight druids or getting captured and being peaceful and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I see two, pa two paths here. I don't want to complicate it. Like I said, do not overcomplicate it. Two paths. You either teleport it on it, roll the probability, miss it, track, right? Some ways, hope for the best. The other thing is you go to Ormar and you try to get an actual accounting of somebody who's been there memory encoding maybe somebody who's understood the area more often and try to see if you can if you can uh increase the likelihood of teleporting to where you want 
There's risk with both of those. I'll let you discuss this during the break. Uh, and then after the break, we'll kind of come to a conclusion of which path you want to take. But those are the two I would suggest for you all right now. If your plan is to try to take the assassin by surprise, if you scry on them, I will tell you right now, the capabilities of this assassin are, you are intelligent enough, Othala, to recognize that if I scry on them, they will they will most likely know that I have scry on them. The yeah, sensor will be yeah. detected. So, um, yeah. So anyways, we're going to take a 10 break here. So we'll come back uh, at about 6, uh, 6, 18, 6, 20 p.m. PST. If you're watching the stream, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you in a bit. Bye.
All right, welcome back. Uh, we took a pretty long break there when players uh, had to leave for work and then they needed to talk and discuss about their plan here going forward. Um, obviously, uh, proceeding forward here and then I'll try to pass over to ownership uh, here. Let's see. Make sure. So, uh, Faith, you said both. Uh, I could do both or one. doesn't matter. I'll take one. That sounds like fun. I've never played a wizard before. Yee. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm not gonna, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna open up the character sheet and all the spell lists be like, what <laughs> is all this stuff? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to start off on the ship. Uh, we'll, we'll start off on the ship here as uh, it is rocking uh, back and forth. Uh, we're with Jonathan Yon at this point on the sloop style of the ship with, with the three different masts that are there. Not a very large ship at all. You're aiming to have the ship away from the Isle of the Blessed in the direction of east. That's obviously where the heading of Jonathan Yon is. You're heading back into the bay here. You want to get far enough away that whatever time distortion plagues the Isle will not have any sort of issues upon our teleportation uh, to the place that we intend to go. Jonathan Yon at this uh, point will also uh, be mindful. So you're going to be tending to kind of, they're going to be taking kind of like a, a solo crew at this point. You know, they don't have anybody to help them on the boat. Um, and so they're trying to get through the current uh, and this, the kind of the stream that runs itself through uh, between the aisle, that sea, right? That's very volatile and into the mouth of the bay. So your journey is going to have to be helping them out and not leaving Jonathan John stranded that they can't get a good heading into the bay and they won't wash up onto the rocks of the north or south miles off of their due course. Eventually, you're able, after hours have passed by here, we're going to transition our period in terms of hours. Relevance uh, here is important. Probably getting towards the afternoon, uh, evening, 7.30 is what I put onto the clock. And you're near the top kind of bow of the ship, grouping yourselves together, and you're looking for your teleportation. Uh, I was on break. I had a phone call as well, so I wasn't hearing a whole lot of what you were saying. I imagine teleportation is going to be done where? Um, so I think, uh, the only place we have enough information on for a safe teleport or that spot, unless, do we have enough information on Cataralonga? No. Don't. So, or Amar. Yep. Okay, so we are going to Ormar. And now I can't pull up scenes on the server, so I gotta close Ooh. all my stuff. Gotta reset the browser. I like how stuff is just getting slowly added to the map. Stuff is slowly added to the map. Like we just, when we started, this map had like nothing on it, and there's like just like symbols, and like little writing all over it. Well, that's uh, I mean that's pretty normal. Things grow, things change. It's cool. Oh boy, is it gonna work for me? Uh oh. It's disc. Well, I might have to bring us, uh, let's see. 
that a, we get some ducks in the chat? Quacks yep. in the chat. Hmm. Tragedy duck. Emotional <laughs> damage. That is so oh loud. God. That is <laughs> <What's> my, that? <laughs> just, just exploded. That's like, yeah, it's like ear, ear splitting, man. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That was really loud. Okay. I'm so sorry. I had that one down. <laughs> No, you'll forever hear that at max volume. <laughs> oh, there, no, there it is. Soundboard volume at the bottom. Oh my god! Dang it! Just right click on it. I don't it. like putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. <laughs> that one did. Oh. I didn't know that that one did. I, I just saw those labeled frogs. I don't know what just happened, but my whole thing lagged out. Like it just it completely crashed almost. So let's not do that again. Because I literally I so I'm much. trying to get into these companions and get them to open up. My God, um, I'm so happy you did that, though. Is everyone still here? Is everyone still alive? Yep, 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 yep. I have so many of like these soundboard things. I have no idea what they do, so I just start randomly clicking on them. Did you like pay extra to get all of these, or what? No, if you're not, if you're in Discord, so they can like add them. And since I have Nitro, I can use them from any oh, Discord. I think that's why. So. I was just like going through and I saw one that was labeled frog and I was like, oh, frog sounds are cool. And it's like, nope, but that's not what that is. Alex Jones. <laughs> um, Joe, just keep in mind, um, Othala, we're going to have Othala use one of his beads of rune to uh, transfer a whole monster into there. So the okay. clone will have the ability to use hold monster one time. Got it. Oh, the, I need to go through and figure out one of these are just labeled FBI. I think it's FBI open up. I really need to like figure out what these all do. So I can start favoriting them. Yeah, now's not the time. I know, now is not the time. I think I, I think I got it to do it. Hope to see this place. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever been south of like Elathan. Any campaign? Oh, as far as the the <laughs> game goes, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're Trailblazers. Yeah, oldest running campaign. We get to see all the new stuff. Are we? Yeah, oh, currently. Well, I mean, as of actually, like four months ago, I think is what Michael said. I think as of maybe two minutes ago, or like two hours ago, it might be the oldest running campaign. Because I know the uh, other one on Saturdays is same day as us. Were they, what level were they? Well, there's still a couple, They're and the couple that 13. survived are like 16th. Hmm. Yeah, because they got the experience. Yep. Dude, they got they got 83,000 experience points for yep. fighting. Okay, you god. know what? Maybe we should fight a god. <laughs> <laughs> I... As soon as I said that, I knew I knew <laughs> yeah. Pops would be the one. Like, let's go! <laughs> I knew it. That's just like big fights of shit. We can't win and just take. But the you got to figure too. That was three weeks. Mm -hmm. Three you know weeks what? of if fighting. We get, if we get XP, like eighty-three thousand XP every three weeks, we'd be level twenty like a year ago. Like that's yeah. That's no fun. You know it's what? No fun. You no, say that's good challenges. Though, but... <laughs> I'm just saying, like, 83,000. They didn't even win. They just. Motion vetoed. Motion <laughs> vetoed. Out of here. Get out. Would it be like 200k if you actually killed him? <laughs> All they can do is calculate numbers. I love it. <laughs> All right, I think I got everything going. It looks like it's. I don't. I I might just be lagging, which is I think what's happening. But 
<sighs> All right, so we're going to try to teleport on Ormar. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Did they have any... Um... All right, so uh, we are going to have to have a role here um, because we have never personally been, the person teleporting has never personally been to Ormar before or in uh, that vicinity or that area. Um, yeah. You also don't have uh, an associated object from Oromar or the Niffindel. Uh, these are simply countings of what would I would say seen casually is the what I would give you. You're not very familiar with it, I would say, at this juncture. And the, I don't think I don't think the Felgum people in their notes to you would give you any sort of sense that they were familiar with it as well. That is fair. That's a twenty two. Oh boy. <laughs> Weren't we gonna have Othala do the first one? Yeah, yeah that, the, that, that is Othala. Oh. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. Can does we chrono his... shift that? Boy. Yeah, does chrono shift work Are on this? Yeah, I don't know. It's not a it's not a chrono shift available type thing. Mm. Guidance from Kit, maybe? <laughs> Guidance can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Does lucky work? Nope. Mm. I cannot transfer that. Wait, I find it weird that lucky doesn't work on luck-based rolls. I mean, it does if you're the one rolling. Oh, okay. I mean, to be... Is it every roll luck-based? No, but like D100s, which are meant to like simulate, like, just... Oh, like, pure... like percentage-type stuff? Yeah, percentage-type stuff. I find it weird that lucky doesn't apply to those, because it's meant to be D20s, right? Oh, I think you might be technically right there. Yeah, I'll have to read it again. Who knows? Maybe we're just so far off we land on top of her regardless. That would be <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Holy shit. We we're so far off we land to like the ruins of Calamar. Look, let let's be honest, so Michael's on his TPK arc right now as the, <laughs> as the DM, so we're, we, we might go to we, we might go to fight a god. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna end up in a dragon lair, I'm calling it now. And that dragon armor I made, it's going to end up super useful. <laughs> and it is D20s only. Yeah, again, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it's weird that they don't work on D100s, which must simulate like pure chance. Like the I mean, pure... how overpowered do you want this feat to be? It's already the best one in the game. Wait, okay, fine. Maybe only D100s? That'd be interesting. Well, no, then it would suck. Because how often do you actually roll a D100 for stuff? All right. Okay, but what if you Yay. Oh, God. That's a six. I see that smirk he had with the last group. I don't like this. <laughs> oh, no. We're Here screwed. We go. Weapons out. <laughs> the assassin killed us through our own attempts <laughs> to kill the assassin. That That would be very unlucky. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this stream here. Yeah, but maybe it, they could like modify it to be a D100 only. So like, you get you can like roll two dice for every D100 and then choose which one you want. Like it very rarely more than one D100 every session. Hmm. I mean, I guess yeah, there could be another feat that only applies to D100s, and you could just take both of them. Right. Well, I have yeah. the stream view to something else. Apparently, the stream view oh, is some half sort of like artifact of an item up on their screen. Oh. No one's seeing some sort of ring of protection, random stuff on this map. No, right? I I do. You have that? Oh, have on the top of... right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I have no. I have nothing else on my on the right. Just the ring of protection. There's Wait, no nothing way. else. There's no way to click that off, right? Uh, I, I... Active yeah, objects will be permanently deleted and cannot be recovered. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I just clicked it off, so. Yeah. Same. How do you have no other passive effects going on? I Well, that's the thing. I, I usually do. They're just not showing up. Oh. Oh, I just clicked it, and then all my other ones again. So I clicked it. Yeah. Well, I, I took it off, and I have nothing now. Look up in the top right again, I just did, and they all popped up again. 
let me refresh here. No, it was a um it was a um like it it's not the active effects for your character, right? That that mm -hmm. little those little visual active effects, those effects for your character. I'm talking of like a big weird writing of ring of protection across your screen. Oh, no, I did not. I thought you were talking about the active visual effects. No. No, no, those should be there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I still don't have any of those. Yeah, I mean, it's... But maybe that's because I'm on the the map I'm on. And maybe. All right. Yeah. No, I don't have a character token down. That's probably why. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Nope. Good to go. Okay. I misunderstood what you were saying. Yeah. No. Um, I, I it's on the stream view itself. When I went to the continent, this continent map, there's like um, almost like a journal hmm. writing would be, but there's no backdrop to a journal, and it's like just writing of a ring of protection item across it. I think it's strange. Um, anyways, we're getting off topic. As long as you don't have something just big on your screen, causing you not to be able to see what you're seeing. That's all I care about. And there's nothing spoiling or revealing or anything like that. All right. I don't need to tell you all where you are uh, neat you are right now because uh, you're going to immediately know where you know. All right. Ocean sounds happening. You all know how to swim? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> shit. Jeez. Oh, no. We're in the bay. I said I'd be summoning my uh, Pegasus beforehand. I uh, can breathe so. underwater, so I'm all set, but... Well, is it time to turn Joe into a whale again? You all make athletics checks. If I summon a Pegasus beforehand, do I need an athletics check? Your Pegasus would be in the water. Oh, God. Shit. Okay. <laughs> So your Pegasus is drowning too. So now uh, you potentially killed two people. I thought I was gonna chrono shift that. Oh, Costas. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'm the one who needs to worry about this at least. Okay. Uh, let's see. Roll wise, uh, I'm gonna go uh, through. So Istril, you said you're getting a reroll, or uh, you not said, me? Athala. Not you. Athala is gonna reroll, but Celis is the girl. Okay. All right. <laughs> So you have uh, basically had a mishap with your teleportation. So as you're at the bow of the ship and you begin to teleport, the phasing of reality begins to pull you far, far to the south of your intended destination. You have traveled well over 100 miles off course, and you have appeared oh, in God. the Uther Bay. <laughs> as you appear in Uther Bay, you are in the middle of the war zone right now. So as this peaceful, tranquil music as you appear and immediately with cresting of white waves as they hit over, the water here is actually warm. So the athletic's not survival at this point. You're not going to fall prey to any sort of chill from this water. It's not frozen. It's actually, uh, there's a jungle even to your east, so there would technically be a jungle to your west. So a lot of the water in this bay is actually warm. So the athletics is because you're getting, you're literally in an ocean that's part of the bay, and the waves are hitting you, and you're getting hit by white cap waves, and the wind smashing through, and that tranquil, beautiful ocean sound is gone, and all you are left with is the waves crashing and moving themselves through. Uh, I don't necessarily have a crazy wave sound, so that's probably all you're going to be able to get in terms of ambiance. We'll also maybe create. Uh, oh, let's get uh, let's get some of this uh, get a little combat action going. So one, <clears throat> Dirty Joe, Istriel, Kit, Costas, Alia, Thala, Alia, going through the rules now. Istriel with the three, you're beginning to drown as you begin to. You weighted down by your armaments of your swords and other equipment that you have attached begin to pull you underneath the water line. You're unable to keep yourselves above. With all a successful one, not successful one is beginning to melt away and their ice sculpture frozen solid so will come state as they begin also to fall underneath the water. The rest of you are able to tread and to move around. Kit, you with a 20 are more able to save someone that's nearby in the teleportation, but you got to choose between Istril and one. Get one. Oh my what? god. Um, do, do I, I... I don't remember. Did he say to us back in... When he was creating them, he can recreate these... 
doubles, or once they're gone, they're gone. I can get somebody too. I can get someone too. Um, I can breathe underwater. You know what? I, I don't care about the double. I mean, it's nice to have, but I'm going to save the party member in Israel. Okay. Is there a dragon Israel? going like attacking us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Joe's going to activate his um, his stone, get his gills going, and he's going to go after one. Okay. Uh um. All right, so Kit, you grab Istriel, holding him back as you're treading water, keeping him afloat, gasping for air, Istriel, as you kind of grab on. You have a sailor at heart, but you're caught off guard. You didn't have a time to catch your bearings. You're still in the middle of the casting of the spell, so your reagents, everything's still kind of out. They're swimming around, floating now, caught through a wave, lost. There you go, activating the gills. You're able then to begin to swim down, catching one. The silver crumb, pulling them up. What you're hearing, like to... what you're hearing here, is cannon fire. That's oh. continuing from warship to Marian warships that have rail oh cannons, that are extending them out, bombarding. They have the Tamerian flag that colors. Uh, uh, actually, you might be. Did I give you that information? This drill to you. Uh, you have that in your doc document for the Tamerian flag. Which information? Flag. Tamerian flag. Oh, I don't have the the colors. Okay, let me. Uh, let me go ahead and get into my notes real fast. Can I change um, shape into a whale? <laughs> I fucking love it. And you? Well, yeah. I, mean, you I mean, if you could, if it's a beast, sure. I don't see why a whale isn't a beast. That's <laughs> Before you do that, just saying, my plan is open up a magnificent mansion, chill for an eight hours, and we'll come back out and try again. That's not a bad plan works another eight hours i mean it's like the middle of the night well it's evening now anyway so you know if we start at like four in the morning or something okay all right so the tumerian flag which is the universal flag of elyon is what it's noted as is going to be two eagle-like wings that are going to crest down of gold of green backdrop with a white on tapestry on either side so it's kind of white bars here green backdrop then gold like eagle wings as they crest over and then a very elegant, almost vine kind of wreath is encresting those wings. Those are what are on these warships. The warships themselves are going to range from upwards of 150 to 180 feet in length. They're galleon uh, class, man of war class ships, and they have rail cannons on multiple decks of their actual ships. And they're bombarding the west side of the bay right now. So as this is firing off and it's sending off these volleys of cannon fire, all you're hearing is bombardments, just rhythmic bombardments that are being sent offwards and directed. And then as you're treading water, you're looking around for the sights of the ships, but you just can't really see them because you're only hearing sounds, your water, and then you might be pulled up a wave and then you kind of look and you can see them due south of you. Not too far away, they scattered the, pretty much the entire bay, the bubbling of uh, this black cloud that is sm uh, smoldering over Penn Island as well as the cackling lightning of black and blue and red from the ever erupting Mount Dramar on the Isle of Beer that coats over the desolate wasteland of the war front that is, was once the region that this bay is named after. The jungles of Chandranar and the province completely torn apart, fragmented of land, cresting through and the black clouds underneath is a great red dragon, a worm that spans well over 160 feet, breathing blue and white breath that you can see even at this range hundreds of miles off is that distance of that red glow through the black of the lightning as it cracks through and then their breath able to reach hundreds of feet down into the ground as they're breathing it on the land the cannon fire setting off their volleys and the roar is not of that dragon that is far away the roar is of a green dragon that currently is in the water that is wrapped around a nearby ship roughly six miles due south of you as it emerges, lets out a roar curling around the ship. You see magical spheres and other protection abjuration magic being cast in retaliation as the dragon head smashes onto a shield-like bubble and then the whole ship begins to rock back and forth and you can hear the sounds of other magic and cannon fire continuing. You all are in a bad spot at current as you're treading, but you've managed to, with your athletic checks, as well as grouping yourselves together, interlinking your arms most likely, pushing yourselves on your backs to try to float through the cresting of the waves. 
You now have to get yourselves out of here. You have no boat. You have no method. So we've got to come up with some situation and decisions. Free to role play amongst yourselves. So I'm asking destinations, Penn Island, Shore, Dragon. No, hold on. Uh, why you say character? Would I know if opening a portal underwater would lead to water going into the portal? Portal, uh, you mean teleportation. Uh, magnificent Mansion. Hmm. Yeah, I would. Okay. Your magnificent uh, mansion just cannot work here on uh, on wet. I mean, if it's gonna, it's gonna suck all the material into it. Can we teleport again? Could. We could hold you up so you could recast it. But then we'd you be. Just, I mean, you could just kind of sit on top of us. We could try to go for one of the ships. I mean, they're to Marion. They won't attack us instantly. Uh uh. They're in the middle of a fight, and we're people appearing out of the water. And there's a dragon, like, right next to us. We kill dragons. Um, we can try and help. The wave crests again. You can see the magic entering oh. in towards the dragon. The green scales as they glimmer elegant, sleek, as the dragon roars again. The magic then hits. Purple and pink cackling lightning sprout from the green dragon as it is immune to their damage. They then send their head as a sledgehammer into the top deck of the ship, crashing. You see bodies of actual Temerian sailors being sent flying, and then the gas of poison emerges from their nostrils as they breathe, a serpent, as they move their head from left to right, coating the entire top deck in poisonous gas. You hear the screams and the cries of the sailors. Okay. All yeah, right, so, so here's the deal. One of you guys needs to teleport us to the shore yep. that we can see, and then we need to do the Magnificent Mansion for time to get spells That's back. That's another 7th level spell <laughs> we're running out of spells. Um, okay, you know what? I'm, I could turn into a whale, and you guys can get my well, mouth, and you'll have more time. Use yeah, but the dragon—that's like snack for a dragon, if he pays attention. Use Othala to do teleport. We use Othala to get here, so we have what? Well, we have one more if we count Othala's clone, but then they permanently lose that spell slot, and then we have mine. Um, I have to pick. How many seventh? Okay. How many seventh um, level do you have? One. Uh, how about? Okay, um, associated, would, a, would like a mug count as an associate? Like if I had a mug from, um, oh my god, the tavern back in uh, Fort Farron, would that yeah, count so as an you, associated well, object? Well, you're very, I mean, you're very familiar with it. You would, yeah. be, you would be able to teleport on the spot. Can I just attempt to teleport us back to the tavern? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> back to the tavern. We have to. We have to. Back to the tavern. <laughs> yeah. Is it? It's either that or die. In, Can in this we case, not I just think. try to get to Oromar again? Yeah, we're going to, but yeah, no, we're not right now. <laughs> Wait, why not? Why not just go straight there? We we'll try we, again tomorrow. We, we could try we, again. Not, e not even tomorrow. Uh, just be eight hours. <laughs> like, I mean, like I, I don't. Gotta make decisions now. Again? <laughs> yeah, if we were off again, I, now we're down two teleports. And yeah, okay. it might even be worse than this, where we're stuck in in something like this. <laughs> All right. Yes, I have your deliberations, and you know the athletics check. As you're continuing to talk and role play, this is in real time. I'm taking this in real time. I'll put this yeah. initiative I have to. You're having conversations. Oh, you're God. trying to tread water <laughs> as best as you possibly can. <laughs> Going through the rolls, uh, looks like we have Othala at a four and Istril at a one. I'm going to call a chrono shift the one. Okay. And then, Kit, you have a natural one, which is a failure, regardless of you being a success in the rolls. Joe dives after him. Okay, Dirty Joe, you dive after Kit here. Othala is um, going to be a. F uh, who's getting the reroll here? Uh, Israel's getting the reroll. Thirteen, you're able to tread. Yeah. Okay, Othala is not able. Does not beat the DC. Othala begins to dive down. Dirty Joe, you can only save one. You choose Kit. Yeah, I'd like to dive after Othala. Uh, Othala's clone also is able to use Chrono Shift, right? Uh, supposedly oh, yes. yes, but remember they cannot rest. So feature-wise, oh, when they use yeah. expel, when they use consumables, when they use the slots, okay. that is it. They can don't I rest. Michael, can I turn just into an orca? Just can't. Uh, just look. I'll be close enough to you. Can't tri cast teleport and let's just get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Is everybody I'm not still within ten feet? Yeah. Othala is now underneath the, the water. Othala is not within ten feet. Costas, are you going to change into an orca and go get him? Yeah, I'm changing into an orca okay. and getting Othala. All right, activate the stone, changing yourself into an orca, and you begin to dive down in search. All right, I need you to please make a perception check based on the orca stat block. We're gonna go ahead and tense and purposes. We will use the whale. Notice the killer whale. Because <laughs> they're the same thing. 
You have echolocation and you have keen hearing. You'll have advantage of the perception check. You have and plus three. Do I keep three. my proficiency in perception? Uh, it is a, a, a technically you will have percep. Yeah, you'll keep it right, and then you have echolocation. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your perception, and then you'll have advantage with the chain shape, I believe, because it's different than a wild shape. Okay, um, advantage, and then... Um, yeah, so just roll a perception good. check, and then you can click the advantage on it. All right, you're able to find them in the water. You're able to put them onto the nape of your nostril and your spout. You're able then to kick them up there, and then you're able to float on top, and everyone's able to grab your blubbery fins, even your dorsal probably grabbing under that. You're just kind of now keeping buoyant. No more need for athletic checks. Teleporting to out front of the tavern. All it's right, a big one. Teleporting, <laughs> <laughs> teleporting for Terry. <laughs> yeah. That's All actually right. going to be fine. <laughs> this is going to be great. You might be on the uh, menu tonight. Mm, I hope not. Taste. When teleport goes wrong. Yep. Yep. Wow, that was a catastrophe. We right, can to try and get in eight hours, and <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna keep the theater of mind here, just because I am lagging, and so it's gonna take some more time to get scenes and stuff out. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to waste any more time. So, um, we'll keep theater of mind. We know what Fort Farron looks like. We know what the tavern looks like as well. We don't need to have that necessarily. So, if anything's changed with the village? Not so much. Everything's pretty. We just actually were here recently. In fact, in terms of time, uh, eighteen days though have surpassed. And so there might be some more liveliness as the, the seasons are changing, right? So we're in winter, we're coming to spring, and so things are now being sort of fields to be barren. They're going to be plowed, they're getting ready to be planted with seeds, ready to grow. Lump and Stump Tavern, that's what we're going. We're going outside the Lump and Stump Tavern. That is what you're familiar with. However, your mug is for the Lump and Stump Tavern. And when you teleport, your familiarity of the mug places you inside of the Lump and Stump Tavern. Oh, as you do that, you appear in the tavern itself with Costas being an, an orca inside of the tavern. That's, that's yeah, that's awesome. on, on track. That's on track. <laughs> so they're so, all just grabbing onto my giant orca body and they just appear. Pleasant tavern conversation as they're drinking and having a good time here. In the evening, when most of the people are drinking and eating at this tavern, all the tables are filled. The orca, bam, appears inside of the tavern. Core pillars explode, shattering wood fragments. You see a couple people ah, get hit by the wood fragments, speared by them. Other people are crushed by the multi-ton... Do you know how heavy a killer whale is? Multiple mm -hmm. tons of weight. You could have gone with a dolphin. Ah, you see them screaming in terror as your leg, your fin, you know, is on top of them. Your tail, your fin is on top of them. You see his yadir is there looking... Um, what the hell? Oh. Begins to scream outwards at what has happened. People are crying, shrieking, they're running for the door. Some people are breaking through the windows, just climbing out the windows. The rest of you are there on the other side of... The killer whale. Now, what's important is that you're going to be, if you're holding out of the fins, you're holding out of the dorsal, you're actually going to be like on top of the prone, and then whoever's on top is probably going to hit and bounce onto the ceiling as well. So you're going to get crashed through the ceiling because it's not very tall. And work is also very, very large in the height department as well. You've destroyed over seven tables. You've destroyed a critical pillar above you, shattering down. Things are coming down now. Lumberstone, Lumberstone was, revert, Lumberstone revert was back already a shack that was tilting it pretty much. So everything's coming yeah. apart. Yonder's the top of the bar holding an axe. Begins to hit fragments of things falling down from the second floor. Coming across the customers. Get out! Get out now! Evacuate! We can scream. <laughs> These people are crying. Yeah, I'm turning Sorry. back to Costas. <laughs> no. Man, I hope you have enough money to pay for this, Costas. Oh, Christ. I think, the tele I think the person who teleported <laughs> just you just destroyed our favorite bar. Activate and you return back to yourself. You can see the people that are crushed by your tail and your fin and your other sorts of, uh, of, of whale body. They're crying out, crawling themselves. <laughs> Their bones. Yeah, so lay on hands are going out. Lay on hands <laughs> and uh, cure wounds. Anything that can heal. Cleansing touch. Everything is going out. Gossip goes yeah, to work. Same with Joe. 
Your Joe goes to work tending medicine, providing cure wounds and other ailments be, or other spells to cure their ailments. You begin to kind of treat them. Right now, second floor is beginning to kind of come downwards. You have magic to be able to maybe telekinesis would be helpful here. Yeah. Other forms yeah. of magic, right, would be would be good. So activate some telekinesis to brace the objects and brace the pillar. And then Kit, you're able then to grab some of the pillar, putting it back using some tools. Maybe you're able then to support this critical core pillar at the center point of the tower that embraces the structure. At this point, Yadir, after the commotion has subsided and the people have been saved, town guard stride in. They look towards Yadir. Yadir! What happened? Three of them. Very colors. They look towards the rest of you. They point. You know them, right? All looking around. Wayward ones. What happened in here? Were you attacked? No, God damn it! They attacked the town. They attacked the town. This one was a whale. God damn orca. Come and eat all these people like they were fish. <laughs> yeah, dear. How much have you had to drink tonight? Yeah. How much? What? Nothing! See as the guards turn. I don't even need to roll. God, you're... Is this more of your shenanigans again? No! No! <laughs> you can't believe me now! <laughs> I was in trouble over damn tavern! You've broken several tables. There's been many bar commotions that have left this tavern in complete disarray. Well, wayward ones, we're sorry you have to deal with the Yadir, but it's the only tavern in town. Yadir, get this place cleaned I mean, up. We only came here to give him some of our wayward whiskey. I was, and I'll walk over to Yadir and hand him a bottle. <laughs> the hell is this? I don't want this. You'll, en you'll, you'll enjoy. enjoy. It. Almost cracking the bottle on the counter. Hops down. Look at the people. Look at my look at my tavern. Look at look at look at my patrons. Begins to yell out. See the yeah, people bandaging. Walks injured. up to like Yandir. Just hands him a bag with a hundred gold in it, and just just like. It pats him on the shoulder with like a you'll be fine look the guard look you're paying him now i mean this is our favorite tavern else. like we can't oh, have it in disarray can we that's right you feel bad for him see they're giving you coin yeah dude that's good no <laughs> this is it look we can stick it to you slaps the coin down i don't know how the hell i'm gonna convince anybody let's look towards the guards Gotta believe me. Right. Well, Yadder, we appreciate you uh, being there for us. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me know if you need any help uh, further. It looks like some people got uh, hurt by these shenanigans. So we'll go see if we can go fetch uh, priest and uh, any medics we can get. Let's go. Great. Let us appreciate know if you need our help. Yeah, no worries. They get to walk out. <laughs> Y'all dear, my man, you would not believe the day we just had. They hold the axe. They begin to point it upwards towards you, Costas. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it was hey, you. I saw you much. change. You were the fucking whale. Hey. I don't do no bad. fucking druid magic. That voodoo shit! You better get out of here now! Hey, hey, I'm here. Calm, calm down. down. I, I ain't gonna calm down! You said my tavern! That's all I have! Take, take a sip of this whiskey. It's really good. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Bye. So, theoretically, if Perfect. someone had destroyed your tavern, how much would it cost to repair it? That's pretty good. What? Mm. Yeah, theoretically, how much would this cost to repair? It's gonna cost you that new damn army you got on. No, we're gonna catch that armor. <laughs> if you don't give me that armor right now, I'm gonna tell everybody you a whale killing people. <laughs> mm. You're a killer whale. Ha! Gotcha. Good luck with that. I ain't gonna tell everybody. Y'all need to go spread the word. And all those people out there know the truth, damn it. <laughs> yeah, Bring in that game town guard. They only arrived on the sea, but those patrons, all of them. Whole stock full. Two dozen tops. At least. Shit. They're gonna know. There was a whale Joe in here. Him. <laughs> Joe hands him 500 gold. Well, now we're talking. Why don't we just start with this? 
<laughs> well, it's uh, yeah. Uh, let me now that things have calmed down a bit. All right, all we right. are so sorry about this, man. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. had uh, we were kind of in the middle of a fight with a bunch of naval forces. There were a couple of dragons overhead. We got capsized. We were uh, lost in the water, and you know we had a couple split seconds to teleport the hells out of here. And you know, seeing as we love and know this place so well, seemed like a logical choice for an emergency getaway. Only, again, we were in the water, so this one was keeping us all afloat, and uh, we didn't realize we'd actually come down inside. Bit of a uh, hiccup in our plans there. We are so sorry about that. Magic yeah, is fucking crazy. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Next time, can I grab like some gravel from a road so we can go outside? Gravel a damn road? That gravel come from anywhere. What the hell? If you want a teleport spell, let me tell you right now. Yeah, you might be some root old son of a bitch, but I used to probably go in hand. Golden Hand used to have magic users. Plenty of wizards on there from all of colleges. Yeah, he knows more about teleport than you fucking do. You're gonna need something familiar with the place. Not like a piece of rock or a goddamn gravel. You need something like this. Begins to reach underneath and grabs on firmly to a cup. Smacks it down. <laughs> all these damn cups I made myself. See? Comes with my sweat, my blood. Going to this damn tavern. Gonna right, need something um, like this. That's, that's kind of the problem. We actually used one of your cups to get back here. What the hell? Did you know you would appear on the tavern? Did you all use tavern? <laughs> Shit! You know you were gonna be here in the tavern. You're gonna crush everybody. Why were you damn well? <laughs> You know, your dear, speaking of all this teleportation business, ha do you happen to have any artifacts from around the Niffindel area? Maybe trinkets you pass by? No. Yeah, they didn't sell the old hammer Niffindel. Golden Hammer got a problem with Niffindel now. What about Merlandar? What? What about Merlandar? You can never... Yeah. I might have got some crabs from Merlandar. Not the crabs you think about. <laughs> uh, can we get some? Yeah. Oh God! That's definitely <laughs> lost. That's that's lost on Lucas the player. Honestly, no, no, it isn't. I'm no, oh my to God! Oh, we like, really? okay, we're in character. All right. Damn it! That, that's not the crabs I'm talking about. They're gone now. Can't get none of those. I might have a handkerchief from Melinda or something. From a fine old woman. I can get you that. Tucked away in my secret little lockbox. Cool. How much? Catch them all those tears of those ladies. Crying all them over me. How much? Gonna be that armor. I'm gonna get one window. <laughs> <laughs> I just start counting out a hundred gold. Is this enough? I'm gonna say twice what uh, Dirty Joe gave me. That, that. That'd be pretty good. Okay. We did smash Got up here. the man's bar. You did. Okay, fine. A hundred platinum. I count it out. That's what we're talking about here. That's going to get you this. You go grab the axe and begin to walk out of the tavern. Listen, folks! Listen up! You see all of them all there. Now more guard arriving. All right. What you saw there was a whale. That was an eo whale. It was a magical whale. An illusion of a whale. Out to attack these here wayward ones. Yep. All heroes are full fair now, you hear? And well, what I saw is you were fleeing for yourselves. They all defeated that damn whale. Anybody be asking, where'd that whale come from? It was an illusion the whole time, conjured by magic. Leave no trace. All right, now. Thank you for your service. Time to close now. I'm going to walk back in, shuts the door. Door falls off. Well, <clears throat> that'll get you there. No more trouble with having to kill away of those. This whiskey pretty good. Make some of this. You got more? I made it myself. All right, yep. Yeah. Well, get you to work. Oh, these damn good whiskey. I'll get you oh something God. on how you tell boy in Atlanta. That's fine. Where you Is that where you want to go? Yeah, yeah. I hear that's world country now. Yeah, Joe looks at the uh, looks at the map again. Well, if uh, if Ormar's out of the uh, question, maybe Kadar Longa. It's a little bit closer. Ever heard of the place? Cataralinga. Mm. Oh, there you go. Oh, y'all, you don't spend much time on the road. 
That's the blue road up there. That's out of the the hills up uh we got them hill hill giants and son of a bitch. Shit. What do you call the Faylists up in there? That's a real town there. Well, no oh well, your idea of spend more time on a boat. That's how I know what Milano, Port City though. Yeah, I mean There's one person here that knows what Nivendale is. Why you haven't talked to him more? The priest? No, talking about the damn Fletcher Bowen. Out of character. I'm sorry. The who? The Fletcher, the Bower, in Fort Farron. Huh. No one has oh, ever, oh. by the way, interacted with uh, with them. Uh, Never had a reason to. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll get see if I can get the scene up here. By the way, I love the idea of teleporting using an STD. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Well, on that note, we're done. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got him good. That's how you trace back an infection, man. Just like, bring me to the source of this. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> their name is Thomas Gliendis, and they are the town's Fletching Bower, right? So they're the ones who create arrows, hunts, hunting, that sort of thing. In the world, um, they actually have experience with the Nifendel. Do we want to know why? Were they a ranger yes. there? They may or may not have been a ranger. At one point. Cool. So yes, let's talk to them. And that's our best shot. At not going in the water again. <laughs> you know, I never liked swimming. You're crazy. Yeah, well, when you're wearing all that plate armor, I can't imagine why. Yeah, you know, it's. Gets the hair messy. All right, let's see if I can get. Uh... Oh, oh, what's happening? Oh, he's so big. Oh, 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 there we go. <laughs> Oh. All right. We'll give him on this one. That's fine. <clears throat> the Fletcher. Tell me, Land. I hear now they're a ranger. Could be from Liberty. Or at least, um, maybe they know more about it. Might have some. Them rangers get around. Especially these lands these days. I've heard they work up with the, um, what those rangers here. Dead old marshes. Now we're coming to wood. Some say it's gonna become the wood of red soon. Back what it used to be. Well, that is very good, that good information, my friend. You welcome. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Got me a hundred bucks. Yeah, all right. That's Have fair. You... No, like a hundred. We just blew up the man's a, a, a hundred deer. I want a hundred deer. Like slabs of meat. Hundred bucks of a series. Well, that might be a little bit. Well, damn it, I want it. You're in the way of coming to my tavern. I want all the meat, lettuce, for days. I want you to be able to be a smokehouse, a large cellar smokehouse somewhere in this damn town, and I want an endless supply, succulent venison for my customers. You can make yeah, that. Yeah, dear. While I appreciate what you're doing here, Kit's gonna stare at him intently. I think we paid you more than enough for the damage caused tonight. And probably for the next year of your business in the tavern itself. We're all friends here. Let's stay that way. And maybe I'll teach you. Better yet, maybe I'll brew some of this good whiskey for you before we leave and you can sell it. Free of charge. From me to I'll, you. All right. All right. I take that. I take it. No, you all scare me shit with those eyes. That damn whiskey do something to you. Mmm. It's good, isn't it? It's nice. It's nice, but get you going spicy. I feel spicy. Mm. Yeah. Maybe we can work together and make a special brew. Is that damn magic whiskey? Is this magic whiskey? 
No, it's just really good. Right. Yeah. Okay. You got all you gotta do bass in there. So what I'll what I'll do to fall through this is I will stay here and uh brew with Yadier while they go talk to the Fletcher. Okay. It is magical whiskey. You get a finished batch in like eight hours. <laughs> Instead of ten brew. years. Your finished batch are good whiskey, not just whiskey. If it's He's using like time magic on that shit. <laughs> That's why he learned in Felgum. That's why Hey. All right, head in the direction of Thomas Fletching. You actually are able to find it's uh, has a, a two story structure. The, the second story would mainly be uh, for an unvaulted area uh, with some rafter space for storage, uh, and then the back half would be probably for quarters, you know, for chambers and stuff for Thomas to actually live and stay within. It does have a cellar underneath, but that's for storage purely only to uh, almost like kind of materials, right, that they use to craft. You can imagine there's leathers down there on hide racks ready to be done, and inside the shop, as you out of the stairs you open the door with this very oaken wood everything's very core uh in terms of this uh structure in bark right coverings and the actual like cornice so the actual um in the roof right the straw thatching as it runs that cornice it's very elvish design so that would be uh essentially like the roof hinge right and so that's going to be very elvish as it comes up and there's no real covering or entryway necessarily. You're really just walking in and the bell rings and there is quite a bit of people here. Several tables are pitched up in the actual uh, shop front side, which is right here, counter across the way. The shop front has mannequins with other leather armors on them. There's some bows that are dangling down uh, from the mannequins on the sides. And then there's like quivers and other things on shelving units that run through. And the tables are here. And there's quite a lot of halflings in here. In fact, there is over two dozen halflings that are currently drinking and smoking halfling green, playing card games of variety, and tossing coins every so often, cheering among themselves with charcuterie and other sorts of quick eats, you know. Um, and now on the western side of the structure is going to be real where the manufacturing happens. It's going to be a lower end area that has a back entrance as well. And that's going to lead to the cell that goes down right the structure. That's going to be where they're actually working the hides and they're beginning to transform them, turn them into the products that you know that someone would have a hunting lodge to produce for rangers or woodsmen, something to do where they're kind of having uh, craps, manacles, rope, that kind of thing. That's what they're doing. They have looms, they have tanning racks, they have spins, they have grind wheels, they have other things uh, to be able to produce that craft. Now behind the store, or the actual counter there, it's going to be I have a slight curve to it, very kind of almost like a tree that's been kind of chiseled down right into this counter and then there's a little bit of a screen with a greenish cloth and that's going to lead to a back room that has a few mercantilism things uh to help with the actual counting of goods and land and that sort of stuff behind the counter currently talking to two halflings in front who are on slight stools is a wood elf that has a whitish silverish hair uh, and wrinkles upon the face with green colorations to their cloak and the hood is down currently. They have a leather jerkin. They have bracers, one of which screams archery because they have the two arrows covered by that bracer uh, being right-handed. And then they have a quiver to the left and a few other purses uh, adjacent to a leather belt. And they have a couple daggers that sit slightly through the armor in a bandolier-like style. They hold themselves leaning against. They're kind of talking to the two halflings. And they look as you kind of walk in. They wave towards you. And then they come around the counter. Quite late, but welcome. How can I help you? I'm Thomas. And this is Thomas Fletcher. Hey, nice to meet you, Thomas. My name is uh, Dirty Joe Buckwilder. We uh, hear tell that, well, you're a former ranger and you know your way around Niffendal. Indeed. And who told you that? Our old buddy Yadir. Seems Yadir likes to tell more about someone's story than simply directing them so they can tell it firsthand. Well, that's why we're here. 
we were asking about Niffendal, he told us that uh, you would be the one to talk to. Of and course. it's not like he told it to just any random person. We are the Wave. I know who you are. If you weren't who you were, I would most likely decline to tell you my story. And that's fine. Secrets are to be kept. The Niffendel is a magical forest. The Zalnir Enclave that lie due north of the Koa, they and their grove have made the forest into a living and breathing world, far surpassing that of any forest known to this continent. You will find monsters that are quite large, intimidating, and perhaps a challenge for even the likes of you all. The Niffendel Rangers, they are a cohort faction that has banded together to try to ensure that these monsters do not plague the folk in the Blue Road, or the small halfling town known as Salon. They harvest their kills, and they use what they can to sell Make an income for themselves. And they take that back to Oromar, sharing it as a common wealth the other rangers. The many folk and traders that make their way to Oromar, and there is a small road that leads from Salon into it, with a few markers that you have to know in order to find your way. I'm sure, looks towards you, Dirty Joe, from what I've undertaken on my research for you wayward ones, is that you'd be able to make these markers with that watchful eye of yours. You'll be able to take that road all the way up there. From there, you'll be seeking a ranger that's near and dear to my heart. Actually, my niece. Known as Lorvir, Aerolith. They are master ranger of the Nithendel. Go ahead and post the name to chat. With their title as master. Nifnel Rangers are welcoming of outsiders, and it will help that you have a ranger yourself, able to speak the ways of common without having delicacies of towards the wizards as well as you cost us blunt simple terms business and don't piss on the bush you don't know if that bush is sick very very good advice you hear that fellas no pissing in bushes you don't know or Wait, more so what's the <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> what was the problem with the bushes? <laughs> you don't, it could you don't know. Could be sacred. A lot of plants and wildlife in this magical forest of the Niffendel are sacred. Not just to the rangers of Niffendel, but also of the monsters and the creatures that have intelligence. Many of them being fey refugees from when the Wood of Red was changed to the marshes of Nathalie. It's not like the so Evry rangers were sending them anywhere. They were sending them to a new home, a place that they could culture themselves appropriately, the environment that they were previously. I'm not saying I'm going to, but just theoretically, if someone did piss on a bush, what would happen? You'd be strung up by your uh, ankles, tied, then dangling down from most likely a yew branch. They would then tar you and light you on fire. Some sort Sounds of barbaric. Fair ritual. The rangers of Niffendal would just tell you to get lost. Right, well, I appreciate that, but um, there was one other thing. Do you happen to have any keepsakes of your time there? I do. What's it mean to you? As you know, we are capable of wielding magic, and we're looking to teleport there. Teleport to Ormar. Right. You wouldn't want to teleport to anywhere. 
You don't know where you'd show up. Ormar has three levels. The first level, it's easily accessible by ladder, as well as uh, a little bit of a rope pulley for supplies, if you're small enough. The tap room. You're able to get ale and drinks, dry provisions, food. They also have a stockpile of arrows, quiver and bow, ready to hand out to those who need them. I'm sure you will find the Master Ranger there. It's the direction of the windows at this hour. You won't catch him anytime else. Most likely will be out in the wood or he'll be up further in the tree. The likes of you all, even as wayward ones, will not be permitted. Ormar is also connected to several other trees and rope bridges from these other two higher levels. They connect some of the chambers that the rangers have in the actual interior of the trees. Speaking out of character, basically saying it's tree houses that are connected. Yeah. I can well, give you something. Yes, yes. You go behind the counter. Open the jewelry box. Close it. Put it underneath. I hand it over to you. In the jewelry box. a large tooth from some sort of creature it has a pin sized hole with a leather braided strand to serve as a nails my niece has one of these this one is mine it is what most of the rangers will have in their possession it's what is most linked to Ormar where they are made The creature that it comes from is not a creature to be tampered with. This large worm will breach itself and suckle and nurse and sap some of the trees in this forest. Most of its body is deep within the earth during this engorgement. Rangers of Niffendel were able to bring one down long ago. It's thousands of its teeth raced in its mouth. We were able to turn it to these necklaces as a token keepsake, a trophy, if you will, of our kill. Shai Halud! I'm sorry. I had to. Yes, we also ride these worms. <laughs> 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 and we have this device known as a thumper. We uh, make way to them after initiating the thumper by Ornithopter. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, Go on. so welcome. Keep going. I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> well, uh, Thomas, the desert that is, region. On the... That is very generous of you. Um, what can we give you in return? I mean, whether just cash or something else, you are being very forthcoming about helping us, and uh, we really appreciate it. Well, I don't have any use of your coin. After all, stories told of you saving this town for the efforts that you've done here and in the marshes. I would uh, suggest you bring that back, though. That means something. So, after you've finished your use of it, return here. Get back to me. Certainly will do that. And thanks again. Of course. They raise their fist upwards. Luck. Her hand down for a firm handshake to you, Dirty Joe. Grab it and kind of hold it for a moment there. Enjoy the wood. We shall. Our best. Turn around. Oh, you weren't going to buy anything, were you? Um, well, I don't know. Possible. Anything uh, particularly intriguing on offer? There's something you might have use of. The bow that came into the collection after events unfolded. 
of the marshes anyways. A relic that was recovered. Something that was used by the Ivrai. They have no use of it any longer. It's commonly referred to as an oath bow. Out of character, one second, let me look this up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can post the description in chat here, the way to pop it out from the compendio. Description chat for you. I'm going to go ahead and read off uh, some of the details here. It has a command word that is essentially locking on to an enemy. Um, the enemy must be killed, and if it's not uh, within uh, a certain time frame, um, <clears throat> you won't be able to activate this bow in its effect on others. Now, while this bow is in effect to your sworn enemy from the command word, you cannot make any other attacks with any other weapon. Well, you could, but it just won't be as successful. While this is active and against your target, your sworn enemy, you have advantage. And no matter where that target is, as long as it's within range, that arrow is going to fly. So, so the arrow would curve around an obstacle or, or cover or anything. When it hits, it'll deal an additional 3d6 damage. And that's with every hit? With every hit to your sworn enemy. Has to be your sworn enemy. If you're just firing it as a regular bow without activating it, it's just a common long bow. Yeah. But it's magical, obviously. So. That's pretty badass, not gonna lie. Yeah, it's badass as fuck. Well, I got to tell you, Thomas, I am intrigued. That is a mighty fine weapon right there. What's, uh, what's going price on this bad boy? Here's the Ford Farad. And seeing the cash you most, or the coin you most likely have, I can offer it to you for 25000 Hmm. I feel that is a steal for one of a kind bow. It's known to the Ivari for centuries. You know what? I think I'll take it. This is a damn fine weapon. We'll do the ever I proud. Okay. Go ahead and drag the oath bow into your pit. Very decisive for when you use it because, like, we get into a fight and we don't kill it, then you're stuck with that. You're bow stuck with that for like a long time. Seven days. Mm -hmm. Seven days you've also, disappeared, pretty much. Be careful with the time dilations in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That may or may not be from experience. Well, Tommy said it has been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Of course. Look forward to seeing you soon. You as well, in some strange way. Always nice to have heroes here in the town. I'd offer more things to you, but anything I have to offer you is stores your equipment already. It is not as adequate to your liking, I think. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is definitely a prize of any collection right here. I shall wield it with honor. I'm going to get back to the tumble rots. Fair enough, my friend. You have a great evening now. Okay, where to next? Last for eight hours and try and teleport again. I just need uh like 
15, 20 seconds with Yadier. I got a got a special drink for him that's easy to brew that's going to help him out. Are we going to talk to the rangers or are we just going to kind of turn to birds? More, more just one. Yeah, I was thinking just turn into birds straight off. So yeah, cool to talk to with the uh, the master ranger, but maybe while they're on our way back. Yeah. So that's the damn secret ingredient, huh? That whiskey yours there, kid. Well, I'm not going to give away all my secrets, but I got to see what you have here and what you have to work with. I got a very special one for you. It's a new brew. I, uh, it'll actually lengthen the, the amount of ale you can serve and, uh, people will, will give you some stuff. Uh, I, I think we'll call this, uh, Yachty spit. And I put it in the, uh, in the chat there. Basically what you do is you take some water, slightly water down your ale a little bit. Carbonated water is probably the best, you know, bubbly type water if you can do that. But regular water works too, just not as effective. And uh, and I think you like the result of it. Well, hell, man, after my own heart, earning some coin, saving some, saving some coin. I like it. I like it. You know, we used to have a grog up on the ship. We used to buy them rum, get it all sparked. And my customers mm. don't know the difference. I want that hell. I ain't gonna call you any spit though. They're gonna know something's up. I call my spit. But I'm going to say it's just a stout deal of ale when you're drinking. It has normal, and ain't going to no difference. Comedy, why do you say? How was it comedy? <laughs> Bit of them bubbles? Get some bubbles, yep. yep. You got to get some bubbles in it somehow. I don't know what you got here. All right, well, <laughs> oh, y'all to go figure it out, don't worry. I, yeah. I, I know you will. I'll be looking forward to trying some next time we come back. All right, now. Well, where well, you stand tonight, yo, kid? Ain't no rooms I'm sitting and saying, oh, broken house, shit. Let me uh, uh, let me go find the rest of the, the group here, and I don't know exactly what we're doing. I just wanted to make sure I, uh, with my new newfound skill here in brewing, I, I hooked you up with something since you're always so nice to us. Y'all do ain't not nice to you. I mean, we I'm not, you know, I'm y'all do extra nice. I don't, I don't, I don't, y'all do ain't not, not, not nice with nobody else, man. I'll tell you what, you know, old y'all do back in the day probably chopped your head off with his damn axe. Is that a challenge? Ain't no challenge. Ain't no threat. Just telling you, old Yadi, what he used to be capable of. You know, old Yadi well, used to flip some shit around, old pirates and fuckers. I used to kill people. Lots of people. I think old Yadi has got at least a century worth, 100 years, 100, 100 years on his belt, killing people. I gotta be him damn near 200, 300. I mean, pushing 400 people. Mm hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, that's you're right. You're a, a fearsome, ferocious killing monster. And uh, I'll I will give him that friendly pat on the back, but I'm going to do it hard enough to where I, you know, let let him know that he's probably not as spry as he uh, as he once thought. And uh, I'm on my way out, tell him I'm going to go find the rest of the party. <laughs> I knew this was coming. I should have raged. You're gonna get a strength. <laughs> oh man, this is not the time for my bad rolls I've had lately. <laughs> Jeez, that's pretty good. You're gonna come through a class from the back. You're gonna immediately notice that Yadir is ripple with muscles. <laughs> Yadir is like that old man, wiry strength underneath, absolutely just gargantuan as a. Hulk-like figure underneath his attire. Doesn't even budge. He smashes his back. In fact, he looks towards you and goes, yeah. smacks yours. When he smacks yours, blind roll I did for the strength check. He's going to get a 17. Smack right into your <laughs> lower ass region for a clap of those cheeks. I'm pretty sure Yondir is a <laughs> way <Yandere>. of discouraging <laughs> the murder of us. That's, uh, that's impressive there, old man. Yeah. Well, y'all like to keep out fitting out. You know, y'all, you'd be able to do at least 300, 400, 500 push ups is about that dick. Yep. You just have a push up contest. Yo, y'all do weeds every time. Well, uh, we'll have to revisit this next time we come back. 
All right, well, maybe old Yadi will crush some, crush some melons body. again. Yo, Yadi used to use his damn axe to crush in those skulls. Crush some melons. Test the strength. What'd Yadi do? You want to do a test of strength now? No, 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 no. I don't got no melons on me. I'm just saying. Next time you're over here, maybe we get oh. some melons out with you. Crush them. Old Yadi likes crushing any, kids. Melons. Any, anytime, crushing melons. Anytime. Oh, of course. Of course you meant melons. Yeah. Of course. Anytime, Yadi. I'm... More than willing any time to, to have a competition with you. You gotta go and you gotta find your friend. Are they what in? What in? See, as you're saying, uh, now your friends are coming to the Fletcher. Oh, look, here they are. All right, well, hopefully, not all the rooms are uh, ripped apart. You're gonna be staying up there? Are you serious? <laughs> see, as you look at the, the side of the wood, it's like horrible. <laughs> Does it look I swear. Like there's a... You put any of that bench. damn weight. You put any of that damn weight up there. You gonna go and have it see it <laughs> crash into the damn bar. Yeah, we'd probably be better off camping in the countryside, boys. In fact, we all shouldn't even be in this damn tavern right now. We'll risk it off. I feel like it's being in here. Yeah, it seems pretty structural and unsound. Yeah, you might want to get this fixed, Yadir. It's kind of a hazard. I'm pretty sure Yadir did not change the shit bucket up there. A couple rooms, so uh. Yeah, that wouldn't be good for all he is. Mm. Okay, oh, you don't care about you can camp out now. Some place out back, little little yard out there. Yeah, it's a nice night. Yeah, Probably real fine to sleep out in the real good the countryside here. Real good, especially with all these thick walls around us. You know what? There's no old lady in town that moved in. Sweeten her up. You know she got a little guest room upstairs. <clears throat> I might be able to distract you down below. You guys stick up. Get a little room up there. When did she get here? Yeah. A couple weeks back. Mmm. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? It's fresh, it's new. Oh, y'all didn't put on the moves. And I got a story to tell <laughs> now. And you're a distractor. You all stick in. And all noisy here down below. You just plug your old ears. You don't eat nothing. No, no, it wouldn't be what it wouldn't be proper for us to get in the way of your love life, there, buddy. All right, dear. Okay, we're well, fine you camping know. out. I back. All right, appreciate well, you though. Understand? You know that you all business with you, you all know the Remar Loon, right, Commander? Of course you do. Why don't you get all them rooms that I keep? Got all fancy rooms up in that bitch. Probably is better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think I, I we appreciate the help, guys. I think we'll. <clears throat> I think we'll. Uh, Find a place somewhere. Okay. Why don't you go All ahead right. and you can take care of the rest of your night, whatever you had planned. Oh, I, yeah. I'm going to go get myself taken care of. Good man. As they take their cloak off from a peg near the kitchen, they throw it over their shoulder. They look towards the door. They grab it. It falls off the hinges. Lands. <laughs> as, oh, shit. <laughs> they walk out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're left inside of the destroyed dining hall. I, think I don't know, guys. I, I think we're probably better off just camping out out back. We're only yeah. going to be here for the night. Don't need to be getting all pomp and circumstancy up in here. I'll set up the hut. Okay. Mm. I'm worried. Why? What about? New lady in town. Mm. Do we have a way to see if it's our friend? They've been in the same spot the last. Yeah, and Yadder said she'd been in here for a couple of weeks now. I don't know if our friend is that committed to the boat. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the commitment of this ass is unreal! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like... But they really flirt with Yonder. I don't know. He's he's a charming old devil. Fair, fair. That guy's got rippling muscles. That's <laughs> you. Mm. In my experience, people with a job like that could probably enjoy it. Do what they have to to get the job done. And who knows? Maybe she's putting memories in Yadir's head that didn't actually happen. We have no idea what she can or can't do. 
Oh. Well, you want uh, want to sneak around and check it out? Oh. Thing is, we kids not sneaky. Mm. We can't act like overprotective children. Like it's we can't investigate every random old lady that comes to town. I don't care about her coming to town. I care about her trying to kill us. Or you? I just want to know where the assassin is. I don't know if we can check on that or not. Okay, hold on a moment. Uh, she'll pull out the globe again out of that vault of amber. Use the gift. Seek the assassin. Okay. You activate your gift. You can feel the assassin is extremely close. No, I'm just kidding. Assassin <laughs> uh, yeah. is exactly where... Yeah, let's get a rest here. Get back to Nishindel, hopefully. Let's do, do it. out of character, find it extremely funny that you would try to spy on Yadir, who is about ready to get lucky. So I think that would be <laughs> hilarious bit. <laughs> yeah! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> We're overprotective, I mean, okay? Well, I mean, you, you play into Joe's innate suspicion and paranoia. He was completely willing to go do a like a solo sneak mission just to make sure. But with the gift confirming that she's back in Niffendal, time to get some shut eye, I think. Uh, after so if, if you would have gone with Kit before we found out, Kit probably would have killed her. Just to, <laughs> just to be safe. <laughs> So, <laughs> had it never been used again. again. <laughs> you are you? Ah, oh, it's an assassin! What? Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> See who chops heads better than. I mean, melons. Melons. See who chops melons better than. Yeah, I just pressed the corner of the room. <laughs> oh, shit! Save me, kid! Fuck! <laughs> Thank God, no. Well, Yadier. Oh, Yadier. Oh, Yadier fuck hags before, but I ain't no fucking no assassin. <laughs> Joe pops his head through the window. Y'all are fucking hags? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we go through the long rest, finding a nice, suitable place of the deciduous trees of the small wood that find a cropping out here in the backyard of the tavern. There is going to be a well out here. Uh, that is able to provide you fresh water and then also has several adjacent buildings with their sort of back areas kind of connecting to form uh, this little vegetated uh, kind of forested area. You're able to find a nice flat piece and then you're able to lay down your bedrolls. You might be able to hang a hammock, pitch a tent. You could also use your uh, magnificent mansion if that's available. So you just form the portal and then you're able to rest in there. If the choice is yours, it's Fort Baron. It's safe. You don't really need to break out the bells and whistles if you don't want to. And the weather conditions here are not that bad. They're pretty chilly because we are in the winter right now and we are north at this at this point. So the wind and the you know the coldness is coming through. It's not going to rain on this night, but that could cause you to want to seek some warmer shelter. So yeah, maybe pitching the tent or perhaps uh, you know um, even like a tiny hut, right? Yeah, is yeah. is you know suffice, and you get your long rest. Um, <clears throat> so, from my hearing here, we are going to teleport and Ormar. into Ormar, <laughs> and then we're simply going to change, become birds, change shape. Yep. Yeah. While we're taking a long rest, Costas would have been using his monster manual to try to find native species of birds to the area around Ormar and try to find ones that would behave in a way that they could pretend to be that bird and head to the assassin, and it wouldn't be unusual behavior. So like not a species of migratory birds that wouldn't be there in that specific season, sure. not birds that would be like um, moving in pairs of two or very exceptionally large groups, just like ones where like, oh, look, it's a group of five birds okay. flying at like pretty high up. Like, you know, go so make, go make just... a, yeah, I got you, I got you. Go make a nature check. Go make a nature check. I mean, I'm going to cut you off. Just because we're getting into some crazy details, but first I want to check before we go to the red hole. Yeah, nature, nature. Uh, also, yeah. how are the rest of us supposed to transform? 14's pretty good. Um, you know that any native bird in the Niffendel would most likely be prey for a monstrosity known as a rock. 
Oh. Is he okay. familiar with a creature such as this? It comes, it's very rare in in games. Yeah, yeah, those are big. You know, Faith. I mean, I know what it is out of character. I don't know if Joe ever yeah, would have Yeah, out of character, I know. So the thing with that is, like, we, we could use that to, like, mount people on. And it's because it's so big, they wouldn't be able to see us on top of it. Yeah, so Ooh. the rock... Um, the rock, what, in context of the Niffindel, the Lavastir mountain range and Mount Chris, the largest mountain in the land, is actually braced against the Niffindel. So the Niffindel will kind of begin to climb up into the, into the mountain. The rock is a creature that actually creates its nests in those mountains. And then they will use the Niffindel for their hatchlings and their other birds to learn how to hunt in a safer area. Because obviously in those mountains, even a rock will have predators, right? If they're not large enough. And so the Niffindel is kind of plagued by smaller rocks or the mother rocks, right? That are helping their babies, which means flocks of these things. Creatures can get to very gargantuan size. Obviously, they're gargantuan in their category, but we're talking like massive wingspans of dozens of dozens of feet. So, um, anyways, if you're going to turn into a bird, just stay low. I can tell you. So do we turn into little toucans or whatever, or do we go for the giant monstrosity? The only issue with the giant one is once we find if we ha if we get to the spot, then we have to find a way to land, and so we could they could see like this giant bird landing in the forest. Yeah. Point. <laughs> so I yeah, I'd say we go for two cans or some yeah, shit like with that. Those smaller two birds. cans, dude. There's no <laughs> they have two cans. Definitely in this not forest. two cans. Oh, jungle. <laughs> I don't know. Are, are there any species of falcon or something that hunt in? Well, yeah, this, I mean, that's, red, that's uh, red what falcon. I'm researching. Red falcon. My, I get red falcons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they match the okay, variation yeah. of the fern species that are in here. Sounds good to me. Yep. So I give us red falcons. I plot the monster manual page, show the diagram to everyone, and. Uh... So right. who's transforming the rest of us? Well, what do you mean? You have a full gem, right? Uh oh, is that something I can do? Yeah. If you have a full uh -huh. gemstone, you're able to use the chain shape. You just have to take it for the day, which means you just you can't have amphibious. Well, you choose it for the day. That feature you can't interchange them. So okay, essentially, is well. what you do is you you're attuned to the stone. You get the properties, but also at the same time, now it's completed. You can take an aspect of a dragon to yourself for the day. So Wait. I think. All of us here have complete stones except for Kit. Kit has a pocket on his wrist. So, does Thala have a clean, a complete stone? Or? Oh, yeah. No, so, Thala does, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Thala well, doesn't? Oh, yeah. So no, he completed it piece. after the fact, didn't he? I thought he found that once. Yeah, 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 he went wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah. Thala has Thala is the white one. Yeah, of course. Thala yeah. has the white one. Uh, one does not have one. So, if the symbol mm -hmm. crumb is coming with us, one one's not going to have one. One doesn't we have, have one. And... We have the wand, right? Yeah. Polymorph. So I I could polymorph one, and then we could use the wand to polymorph one. So Kit and one could both be polymorphed. The rest of us okay. use our gem. Can we please not use the number one and the person one in the same <laughs> sentence? <laughs> because I'm like, I could polymorph it's one. It's not my fault that Jay one. decided to name him like this. I mean, I can't <laughs> help you. <laughs> That's true. I, I was confused when he was telling me it. I was like, one, zero. I was like, what are the names again? I asked again because I wanted to be sure I had that right. Yeah. Like, a man. Binary it's, clone army. It's That's like what it is. He, I mean, I'm scared for you all. If he is going to make three, four, five, six, seven, I mean, we're going to get up to a thousand, maybe. This guy is going to have a, a massive army of simple growth. It's going to take over the world. It's literally Damodar. You've rock. raised Damodar in your party. It's going to arise. All our wizards are power hungry. Always. Wizard is never not power hungry. If you've ever what? seen the original D&D movie, Profian, the sorcerer, mm. beautiful power hungry moment. In fact, that character embodies every wizard and sorcerer I've ever had on my table. Man, you can't <laughs> tell me that Istriel <laughs> wanting all these things. I mean, come on. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take that. I'm being completely sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. 
Come on, power. Let's go. All right. So we're going to teleport. And we have familiarity now. I don't need to have a D100 roll. Um, oh, thank God. <laughs> because as long as you, if you're very familiar, if you have an object, I believe if you have an object, you count as very familiar, which is uh, does not have any probability of having a mishap. But the means, associated object. Yeah. And indeed, oh. it is an associated object, which means you will rely on target regardless of what you roll in the D100. I'll also be giving Joe, like, right before we all transform, uh, Fortune's Favor for an hour. Can we roll a D20 on top of your lucky for those survival checks? <laughs> Good okay. idea. Yeah. Get some, get some Fortune's I I Favor. I'm the on. guide for everybody. Yep. Okay. You group up together and you teleport again. And as you teleport, you can hear the sounds of cannons. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Too soon. <laughs> the forest has turned into the water. <laughs> oh, man. One thing that actually worries me is are Red Falcons intelligent? I mean, I think they well, it won't matter unless you're talking. Are you talking about the polymorph? Yeah, we just yeah. follow you guys. Well, they're yeah, yeah because they're the, a bird. I mean, they're birds. So they're probably smart enough to be like, okay, Kit, follow us. It's probably actually better than Kit. Follow the other birds. Yeah, it might actually be smarter than Kit. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it's <laughs> actually a red falcon smarter than Kit. <laughs> like, is this is this an improvement? <laughs> The forest so, uh, of the Niffindel is old, and tales speak of the ancient magic that's held within the forest. As far as inhabitants go, we only know of one such place, Orma, which we have used as our familiar teleport. You will teleport right at the base of their grand tree. That forms the center point of their treehouse collective. Around you are going to be lean to uh, various huts made of dried grass, ferns, tied together with leather bindings. Traders, mainly halfling, and a few other of varied races, are selling goods, primarily that of produce, towards folk rangers. They hold themselves with a green cloak. And upon the green cloak, they have symbols. Either on the hood, or they have it on the of the nape as it sits. The symbol is not so dissimilar away from the Ivrai, which is a redwood bow over a twig. Theirs is of that worm. With its many pins of its teeth that are kind of curling itself. Wrap around a tree. They're purchasing the goods with their coin, and there might be a bartering or exchanging. Their equipment is of a variety of light armors with materials of dark steel and even Beskar. Some of their weapon appears to be magical. Don't do it. Hmm. They have arrows in the quivers of their signs and the feathers of different materials and the shafts of different materials. They have vials of potions. on these satchel-like straps to their belts. As they move around, they glide with ease of movement. Rejo, where you come from, a ranger such as these would be those you would hire to kill the most monstrous of creatures, the most dangerous creatures, ones that would fetch the most coin, the most and the highest bidder on the bounties. There are so many of them here in this forest. Surprising. Generally, these are one and few and far between. 
yet you see over two dozen just here in the market area underneath the tree. And some of them are grabbing on reed-like ropes that adorn to the high treetops. And as they do, they kind of hold here. They grab them. They kind of hold and brace. And as they kind of do, they whirl themselves, twisting. And then people above almost help assist them, lifting them up, or magic guides the ropes up. There's a large ladder. A few of the traders here, they're not rangers, are climbing up that ladder. And there's a pulley system here with a bucket slightly large, almost that of a, a bucket you would kind of brace like a tub, stomp on grapes for making wine. They're beginning to carry that up, a mixture of supplies. There you can hear a conversation, even early hours of the morning, of those rangers getting ready or those traders having some breakfast and drinks. There is a glowing of a blue light that shines effervescent through, catching on the spores of many of the plants that erupt in the morning to catch the drift of the wind. That light is this blue, everlit crystal that glows inside of a hollow space of the tree, four spots facing north, west, east, and south. And as it glows, it seems to shine on the adjacent trees with bearings, such as that they use the tree as a giant compass. There are rangers that are up there. They come to the brace of the half wall of this picketed fence that holds the first floor there. They come to the edge and they hold up a large map of various places that they have hunted, looking at things. And as they do that, the light catches with those angles and those bearings that reflect onto the maps. And they can hold them away to catch it even more so, so it gives them a finer direction. Using mirrors and other apparatuses. Again, yeah, just description, aiding to you all to understand where you are, what this is. The Niffindel trees are what we'll discuss next, because obviously you're in a forest, and how high and tall do these trees go? That's the question. The wood of red is redwood trees. Redwood trees get extremely tall. These trees are deciduous, and yet they grow in great massive trunks that rival those redwoods with an oaken colored bark, and the brambles of their canopies intertwine, sneaking between the others that capture all of the light into them, and the bows that are leaves as they grow, forming into these massive maple-like structures, or like a maple leaf that's grown on steroids. Some of the leaves as they catch the light shine through underneath them with red and green above. A lot of the fern life as well has grown into this reddish green coloration to adapt to that. Most likely the animals and the wildlife share that red color in order to be able to camouflage themselves in. The grasses, remarkably, underneath the canopies of these trees, you imagine that these trees, around them the grasses should be dead or not be able to grow. There's no light that gets down there. And yet they do. They grow vibrantly. And they're luscious and soft. The moss undertone underneath the grass as this blade's going to spring up, allowing for a cushy place to rest whenever you want. Sometimes there's these pools of water. And in the pools of water, as you're making your way through and gathering yourself before beginning to change shape and teleport, you notice that there's one nearby. Some of the traders are beginning to take off their clothes and hop in. A spring. A hot spring. There's a tranquil little waterfall pulling itself from one of the trees, filtering in, most likely from a stream that rolls through the tree, over the rocks, and down. And that activity underneath somehow creates warm and inviting. All right. With that done, you begin to change shape into the Red Hawk. A red bird of prey. Now, as far as the polymorphs go, the intelligence of these birds are not great. <laughs> <laughs> so when you change shape, no one can talk to animals, right? All right, animal handling. 
you're like a bird. So you're going to be a bird handling another bird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead and make an animal handling check. All right, so cast as you change shape in to a bird, this bird here, and then the polymorph of the wand goes through onto one, and then onto Kit. Kit, you begin to change. Kit, can I have you roll a flat d20 for me, please? I thought you were going to say I get smarter. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, eight. You have a negative four. Four intelligence check. As you're beginning to try to interpret the bird that's in front of you. Pointing its wings in a direction to guide you as much as possible. Man, Kit, it's looking like that. You know exactly what it looks like. It's a mating looks ritual. It's like a mating ritual. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Yep. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Kit's going to go hop on top. I hope you fly fast, Ghost. You've got Costas, you've got Kit's attention. Kit is yeah. all yeah. over those feathers. He's got a reason to follow you now. Okay. Go, go, Costas go. is gonna fly away. <laughs> Costas is running. Costas is like <laughs> Kit's on your tail. Fly with you. Alright. And you begin to head in the direction of where you sensed. I imagine is still you're taking the lead. Yeah. Alright. Well, with uh yeah, with Joe. Mm-hmm. Dirty Joe. Looking for signs and things. Okay. So that's where we're going to go and call it. Before we get into any more shenanigans. We'll come Ooh. to the rolls to see where we end up on the next session. I'm sure that I have utmost confidence we'll end up where we need to be after that teleportation mishap. And of course. Uh, make move to the assassin. <laughs> wow, that was hilarious. I that was amazing. <laughs> Jeez. Good. Went from that sure. really downtime, that bog down, trying to get things. I was lagging, getting through the scenes there, halting certain stuff long break to try to figure things out and it was all for teleporting into an o into the bay yeah. fucking damn literally warships bombarding me attacked by a green wagon dragon. attacks right next to us yeah just chaos and calamity that's fantastic and then the killer whale the orca in the lump and stuff that's amazing that's going in the highlight reel for sure yeah good stuff i'll calculate experience points for you all and you're getting a massive negative modifier for destroying the lump. Hey, I would say destroy the lump. The man. Extra um, XP, you know. Smashing inanimate objects. Mm-hmm. And some animate objects. <laughs> yeah, we're getting extra <laughs> XP for KOing all those innocent pub crawlers. <laughs> the innocent pub crawlers. On. <laughs> Where I should go. Hey, ah! Pub crawlers give XP. <laughs> I basically became a sentient bomb, okay? Come on. A sentient bomb? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a new combo move. Turn into a hawk. <laughs> when you've sighted your target, turn into a whale. I'll be Splatter honest. Him. No. I've been thinking about a uh, whale dive bomb for a while now of just flying above a target like a group of targets and turning into like the biggest whale i can like 200 plus feet above them and just like body I mean, as long as them. as long as you think you can survive those damage die because you're gonna be pretty messed up too it's think, a gamble well i think there's a cap to the damage the fall damage there's a cap to the fall damage <laughs> I mean, I'm only gonna be I'm gonna be dealing that cap to all the enemies too. So basically, I take the same amount of damage as all the enemies. So it's like you know, I'm gonna be if taking. You think a that's worth it? It's all temporary hit points, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're polymorphing, if you're chain shaping, no, it's my actual hit points. So like again, it's it's so really if a question. We polymorph you. 
Well, wait, what is the max damage? See if this is even twenty D six worth it. Okay. All right. In the area of a killer of a biggest whale I can turn into. This is one of those stupid plans that could actually work. If we wanted to set that up. It would just need to be two hundred feet up. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you can just fly up and then we can find a way to polymorph you from the ground. Or if somebody casts fly on themselves. Okay. I mean, I have a, a chest plate that lets me fly now. I ha I can change shape into a bird. I can... Wait, hold up. Landing on your target is going to be incredibly difficult. Just FYI. There's so much time. I mean, if I... As long as you get underneath them and you're just massive. Yeah, we can, we can, we can talk about that. It is not... It is... That's, you know this. Conjure animals. Okay? Druids love. There are certain really crazy druids that love to conjure animals in the fucking air above their enemies. <laughs> it's an actual thing. So it's messed up. It is absolutely disgusting. I mean, talking like just the heaviest animals they could possibly conjure, bam, above their enemies. Biggest, right? Like a cow? I don't know. Anyways. Dustin knows this. By a druid as well. By a druid. <laughs> that feels like heresy by a druid. Also the same druid that uh, bit a one or two horses' heads off entirely. It's true. You mm. keep interesting company. Interesting player. I gotta tell you. All right, session 77, 810, and then for you, Kit, uh, 1267. I love the idea that in someone else's campaign, Kit is just bad talking me. Like, yeah, I'm the interesting player. Yeah, this guy, he turned into a killer whale and teleported into a tavern. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, it's usually about your choices when the Paylor is like, yeah, you can do what you want to. Oh, <laughs> sure, it's the Devourer. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh... Uh, Harrison was uh, was definitely an interesting character druid that loved sacrificing animals. Sacrificing <laughs> animals was really the name. Was nuts. Like, yeah, kind of yeah. druid is yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Animals are here to serve me. <laughs> yeah, basically. That's kind of a fun character idea, though. And we were An we reminded him every time. Cost is just like you. We reminded him every time, like, dude. You're a druid that is like supposed to protect and want to help nature. And you're just summoning these animals. He's like, yeah, but they're fine. They're like, no, they're dying. <laughs> they're like literally spirits you're conjuring for the Fey Wild that are being tortured and put to death again. Yeah. Badgers, wolves, killed the horse. Yeah, it was wolves. Oh, all kinds. Wolf spawn. He basically conjured wolves on a roof. And then they like, he yep. had to just jump off of the roof onto their enemies. <laughs> yep. Oh, of like this massive building and just like it's like flat all of them were falling and michael spent like 10 minutes trying to warn him what was going to happen when he summoned the wolves where he was summoning them yeah because oh, they were on a massive pitched roof there's no yep. way they could stand on it they have no right thumbs so yep down they went yep down they went. oh it was crazy um crazy. you know what's going to happen now costas is your mother is going to hear that you were a killer whale in the lumpenstein tavern of fort Farron. Mm. Uh oh, someone's in trouble. I hear that I fought a killer whale in the Lump and Stump Tavern in Fort Baron because we vibed. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's going to believe you out here. That it's going to make no. a lot of sense. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, if you're watching the stream, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. I'm going to close out now. Um, hopefully, you got to enjoy uh, the teleportation mishaps and the other stuff that we got into Shenanigan wise and uh, push through the downtime with us. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Um, we should be able to go next week, uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. So see you later. Bye. Bye.